Let's do this. Get ready for the Dirt Life Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. We are fresh off the UTV World Championships, and uh, we apologize for the late start. Um, thank you very much, Google Software, for being such a piece of crap. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, we have uh, all of our Facebook Live stuff is working, but uh, unfortunately, the YouTube Live stuff isn't working today. So if you... Uh, can listen on Facebook, please go over there and uh, check it out. We w want to have everybody join us and uh, have some fun with us, man. This is going to be an awesome, jam-packed episode of uh, all kinds of mayhem, just like the races were, and uh, <laughs> all kinds of fun as well. So we can't wait to talk to you guys. Please join us as uh, much as you can in the comments section on our live feeds. Um, I would say to join us on YouTube, but uh, unfortunately, Google is uh, not helping us out tonight with our uh, live broadcasting software. So... Like I said, we still want you to join in, so come on over to Facebook and hang out. Uh, you can always check us out if you don't get the chance to check us out live on Monday nights. You can always check us out uh, in the archives. Uh, we are on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, every single type of uh, uh, podcast network. You can check us out on your favorite uh, device and hang out with us that way, too. You can listen to it at work while you're... Uh, doing some welding or something right um so uh we appreciate everybody for tuning in we appreciate everybody for all their kind words over the weekend and stuff and uh even more so i appreciate casey for coming in the studio what's up bud heck yeah doing good how's things going it's going all right a little crazy but uh hanging in there well now that the weather's cooling off it's gonna get even crazier because you're gonna spend more time on two wheels right i know it's funny because we're like hey it's cooling off it's like 67 in the morning and then 180 in, <laughs> in the afternoon <laughs> like when is it gonna lift yeah exactly but it's still better than what it was a month it is. ago so it's better than 90 at 5 a.m uh, well and in lake havasu uh, at the utv world championships this past weekend was uh pretty dang hot man we were lucky because okay. we had an airbnb with a pool so Sweet. we were in there like 24 7 nice when we weren't working in the garage we were out there in the pool hanging out so um yeah like i was saying we attended the utv world championship this past weekend and uh man well actually i should say this whole past week right because it was such a long event um but it was really cool like we had a great time so uh i want to say thank you uh to all the guys that helped me um i actually raced so it was pretty fun like we had a good time and uh we're gonna tell some stories about everybody's journey going down through the race course and stuff because it was freaking brutal man super super gnarly um before we get into everything um we've already missed uh one of my guys alfonso he's gonna come on a little bit later but uh he was our media guy that was following us around having some fun taking some video and pictures uh but since the software didn't start quick enough we lost a little bit of time so i pushed him back a little bit so um let's thank all of our sponsors and just get right to it man um it was really really cool hanging out with everybody this weekend um we got to hang out and see the zollinger guys the only people we didn't see were the solder weld guys so you guys can go to solderweld.com and uh, use the code dirt life save a whole bunch of money uh, i had my off-road repair kit in the car just in case i needed it uh thank goodness i didn't need it i thought i was going to because uh I was tearing up so many tires and wheels, um, but I didn't need it, so that was awesome. Uh, the KMC wheels and tire uh, EFX tires lasted really, really good, um, so please support all those guys because they have uh, fantastic products, man. Once you hear how gnarly that terrain was, you're going to be like, man, going on the trail ride is going to be easy if I use those products. Yeah, but you can't weld a tire back together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so those ones pretty much needed it, though. Yeah, they do. Um, and uh, those are badass tires, too. So Definitely. Uh, I got to see the Zollinger boys, so please look uh, at ZollingerRacingProducts.com and check out all the new stuff that they have. They're coming out with new, awesome, awesome, innovative stuff for UTVs all the time, man. It is super, super cool. So please go check those guys out and use the code DIRTLIFE so you can uh, show some love uh, our way and uh, obviously you can save some money too. So um, like I said, thank you to Ryan at KMC Wheels. We hung out with him this weekend. It was just good to see everybody. And uh, we got to be part of uh, the Shock Therapy uh crew actually almost all weekend it was really really neat man they supported and surprised us with a bunch of fun stuff uh justin took uh, the whole team out to dinner and invited us to go with him uh the stuff that goes on behind the scenes is just uh two things they have so much fun going to dinner was like one of oh, the yeah. funnest things i did and then second the Always. professionalism and the the stuff that they do is off the chain man so it's really really cool to see all that stuff and uh we're going to talk about it a little bit when we get to my portion of the uh, utv world championship but they followed me around with a freaking helicopter yeah dude. i saw that when i saw that picture i was like oh hey that's cool a desert shot and i'm like whoa that's like 
75 more levels of awesome because there's a helicopter in the background dude you should <laughs> what i saw like they were coming out there and like uh justin's like hey do you have any like tape you could put on the top of your roof and i'm like for to what? find you yeah and then so my dad went and got some green fluorescent cardboard and we just taped it on the oh, roof nice and then justin like came over and like surprised i was like no way <laughs> cool. and so it was super super cool to see him like awesome. I, I really honestly man it made me feel like a rock star i was like Definitely. i can't last place I, i'm the only yeah. one with the helicopter <laughs> well the media yeah, makes it look pretty freaking cool. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and dude, we're just some ordinary team, just <laughs> going out and having fun in a little RS1 race car, right? Uh, Perfect. But we're gonna we're gonna thank everybody that helped me and stuff too. But we won't be able to get into it since we're running a little bit behind because we have, uh, uh, excuse me, Ryan Edwards going to call in at six twenty. So. We're going to have a lot of FaceTime calls today. We're going to have Ryan Edwards on from KMC Wheels, like I just said. Uh, Kristen and Wayne Matlock are uh, friends of the show, and they come on all the time. But now we get uh, some super superstars uh, that also have the Matlock name, Wyatt and Clayton. <laughs> so both of their kids got to race the UTV World Championship. Awesome. So that is pretty cool that they uh, – you can click that to – activate it um so that's going to be pretty cool that that they are able to come hang out with us so i can't wait to talk to wyatt and clayton that's going to be super awesome uh justin smith from shock therapy is going to call in uh caden danbury man he had an awesome awesome weekend so he's going to call in in just a little bit here as well maybe after seven o'clock and uh mike gardner uh mike gardner has a pretty special story too he hasn't raced in a little while and uh, he got an opportunity very similar to what i did from craig scanlon to be able to race so it was cool to see him out there as well so um, pretty much everybody that we got uh, on the show is just going to be super, super stoked to talk about their weekend, just like cool. this dude right here. So <laughs> um, I'm really, really excited to go over all the stuff that happened this weekend. It was just fantastic. Like you and I talked a little bit about it before the show when we watched Pro Motocross. It's just cool to see everybody back at the races. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this was no exception, uh, even though the terrain was like – insane yep. like insane <laughs> um we're gonna do some other stuff too before we get ryan on we'll mention it um we're gonna be doing some giveaways um some pretty cool stuff like before uh i don't know if you've ever seen at the motocross races or like at off-road races like at the end of races like sometimes the winners will give away their plastics off their dirt bikes mm -hmm. um you know autograph it and sign it and give it out or uh at uh Lucas off-road events, a lot of times, you know, pro fours, pro twos and stuff, they tear each other's like fenders off and stuff. And, right. Uh, some of the people can go like get the hoods and stuff and yeah. the drivers will autograph That's them. That's awesome. Well, we're going to kind of do the same thing. Uh, Ryan from KMC Wheels, we'll talk to him a little bit about it, but he said that, that we can give away the wheels and tires that uh, were just uh, <laughs> used and abused this weekend. So, That's cool. Uh, these things are pretty badass. So um, since I felt like such a rock star, I'm going to go ahead and sign them and uh, we're going to give them away. <laughs> to some lucky winners we're also going to give them uh some safety stuff too so we've talked about this on the show before but maybe you could show the, yeah, the that's camera a little cool. bit case um is these tac med info uh they're basically i don't know i call them dog tags but they're safety tags yep, that you can put much. in your in your suit Right. Um, I had one of these in my suit over the weekend, and uh, they're basically just so you can keep track of the driver if, in case anything happens to the driver. These are really, really good for trail riding and for anything, not just racers. Yeah, and great I idea. Uh, we got to actually uh, go to dinner with Josh from Tactmed this weekend mm -hmm. and hear a little bit about his story, how he wants to uh, – wants to help people and uh it's really really cool to be able to understand what people want to do and how they want to help people and just make it a, a good time and a safe time for everybody so i'm really excited that we can uh, offer that stuff too and josh is a fantastic dude so um it'll be cool for us to be able to to give you guys that stuff so anyways uh ryan from kmc is going to be calling in in just a second here i think uh, casey's trying to dial him up and get him on the line uh Ryan, I think we use just the audio, man. Uh, so Ryan, what's going on, man? Are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Right on, dude. Um, it, uh, can you call uh, a different number if I send it to you? Because it looks like uh, the FaceTime audio uh, isn't working. I thought we were going to do video. Yeah, I'll just text it over to you right now. So um, while we wait for Ryan to get on the line, um, we're going to do that giveaway, and we, uh, we're we going to do it on social media. Um, I don't know, man. We've got to figure out Are you out talking, like, one each, or how does this work? Like, Yeah, I think we should. I think we should give away one tire. I mean, like, nobody's going to be able to no, use it. Well, things. of course, but it would be cool to have that displayed in your wherever. 
do it in the shop, garage, garage or wherever, whatever. right? Yeah. So I think I think it'd be pretty cool. Maybe we should give it away to four people. We'll give each one of them uh, a tire and a wheel, and then uh, that was at the 2020 UTV World Championship that finished the race, man, on the Winning at Life uh, RS1. So I think it'd be pretty cool for some people to have that. I think we need to work in some taco language into this giveaway somehow. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, right? Like a secret, um, what'd you call it, code word or something? Yeah, we could. We could do definitely do that. So pay attention to the social media. <laughs> we'll do it this week, and we'll have some fun with it. It'll be pretty cool. So um, anyways, so we'll get Ryan from KMC to call in in just a second here. Um and so we were uh, we were talking about how uh, how rad it is to give away these wheels and stuff, and it's even cooler because these uh, these wheels and tires came with such a cool project. The project Winning at Life RS1 was such a huge success. We reached um, just uh, at a million people doing the whole project, and um, it was really neat to see all the support. And uh, you know, we got one of the guys that supported the whole time during the project, Ryan from KMC Wheels, on too. So, uh, what's going on, bud? How was your weekend? Nah, it was good. Uh, a little stressful, but we made it out alive. <laughs> well, you guys had a lot of stuff going. We'll talk about your race, but you guys had a lot of stuff going on for KMC at the races too, because you guys were a vendor as well, right? Yeah, vendor set up, um, you know, full support there. Got to support the racers. Um, then we also had a team over at San Hollow for Trail Heroes. So we were going a bunch of different directions. Dang, man. So it was a busy weekend, huh? Yeah, yeah, busy to say the least. And I got another one coming up. <laughs> the only thing that we missed was that I, I literally, like two seconds before we got on the show, I finally finished the last moto of Pala uh, when, uh, yeah. when I got to see Chase Sexton come home with that W. That was pretty cool, man. Those guys were that ripping. That was so rad. The speed- that and Sexton's gear was dope as so dope also. Yeah, with those circles around his shoulders. Those that was good. super cool. Yeah, the whole like the whole MJ look was rad. However, so, how was that old school uh Cincerello gear? The Fox stuff. Oh, so that that was pretty dope. So too. Awesome. Yeah. Casey and, and I were talking TV. before the show, like Damon Bradshaw, Chicken Matasovich replica kind of. Like, are you feeling that stuff? Uh straight up. Like the neon with the white, like it just killed it. So Fox clean. Is killing it all together. <laughs> oh yeah, you're yep. a fox guy, huh? <laughs> um so yeah, big fox guy. This weekend was super cool. So before we start talking about your race, um, I wanted to mention a couple things. And first of all, I got a lot of support over the weekend. I know you got a ton of support too. But meeting your crew, dude, was like eye opening. Man, you got you have such a good support mechanism in the pits. Yeah, it, it's pretty rad to be able to say, "Hey, let's go racing," and then fifteen people jump up and say, "All right, well, I'm coming with you." Yeah, exactly, and they just work for uh, food and drinks. Tacos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give them more beer and a couple more tacos, and they're uh, right out there. It was super cool, and then I got to meet your son too. Your son is like super into all the dirt off road. He lives his dirt life with dad. Oh well, yeah, this is, that's it's turning into his life now. So he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be racing me here shortly and, and it's gonna start getting scary he's gonna be faster than dad pretty quick here <laughs> oh yeah before it's you coming. know it yeah yeah, yeah. so uh yeah. it it was pretty neat and uh the reason that i say it was eye-opening for me it was because um you can give us a little bit more detail because i haven't actually talked to you about this but um unfortunately you uh were taken out of the race by a rock um like a million other guys this weekend. Um, but I got to see the behind the scenes stuff of what your crew did, uh, and what your son was acting like, uh, during that time. And it was so cool, man. I posted a couple things on social media that were really interesting to me because, um, Kyle, one of your pit guys drove me up to the top of a hill, uh, in, uh, their four seat razor to kind of you know, go see where Ryan was and stuff like that. And Gunner, Ryan's son, pretend like he was driving, and said, man, we got to go help dad. We got to go get dad. <laughs> nice. And obviously dad's way out in the middle of the desert, right. but he was into it, dude. I love that. That's such a cool family vibe. Yeah. He, uh, he definitely is aware of that. Like when dad breaks, you know, we got to go save him or I think he's more stoked than, Oh yeah. Now we got something to work on. So <laughs> it's just, it's something to do. It's cool to have them in the pits and, and know that, you know, if something does happen, they're always going to be there to get me back to the pit or, or if if I have the parts, keep me going. 
You know, or if one of the guys in the pits just doesn't feel like it, Gunner's going to take the wheel and just go out there and get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Age three, he'll just take the four seater out and come get me. Dude, how rad is that, man? So, uh, what <laughs> what happened during the race? Because uh, I never got to really understand what what happened. So maybe you could take us a little bit through it. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, man. We uh, when we start on the fourth or fifth row, um, and I knew knew Blaze and uh, Groom the method car i knew both of them were going to be on a heater starting on the first row so my whole mindset was i needed to get to them as quick as possible and man that that two-seater img built man is freaking rocket and it was just eating every bump out there so we went from i think what seventh place eighth place start um past we're passing for third when i broke the car so Dang, you moved up quick then, because how many miles were you in? Uh, yeah, so when we broke, we were at race mile 10. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we made some pretty quick moves, and uh, I, I was just determined to get at least to those two guys and then hook onto them and kind of keep their pace for the race. And, uh, you know, with desert racing, it's not always about how fast you can go. It's about the patience. and obviously my patience got thrown out the window but i, I was feeling good <laughs> yeah way to go moto yeah. guy blow your load all quick in yeah, the first exactly. 10 miles <laughs> you know it it was just one of those things where the, the car was feeling good everything was working like i felt like I, I wasn't overdriving and i was catching people so it was just it was a cool feeling and i caught up to third and um i was on him for a little bit and we kind of played cat and mouse, and then he kind of, I thought he was going to let me pass, but he was staying right to avoid a rock, and I went straight into it. Oh, so he, he juked you, so him. he shot the turtle out. Yeah, Dude, he totally shot the turtle <laughs> out of Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, we were within freaking two feet of each other, so uh, it was just bonehead move on my part. I should have gapped him a little bit so we could see what was going on, but. Yeah, but hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Because like that's not really a bonehead move when you're in the middle of it. So like to give it a little bit of backstory, like so we can understand, and when we have the uh, other conversations with some of the other drivers and racers tonight, the track was in Lake Havasu, and it was like. Uh, I don't know what kind of rocks you want to call it, but there was massive rocks. There was little shale rocks. There were sharp. There, there rocks. was like, every type of rock you can imagine. Like, right. That, there was not. You threw the dictionary of rocks out there. That's what it was. <laughs> it was crazy because there was some rocks that were, I don't know, 15 feet high, like, you know, like huge, massive yep. rocks, right? And then there was all the the tire killers that were like, let's just say like eight inches, like just super sharp, like arrowhead kind of rocks. Right. And then there was like, <laughs> like A-arm killers that were just like the size that like world's strongest man can pick up kind of like three footers. Yeah. So anyone you could see and then to battle that like on top of it the the I don't want to even call it a layer of dust because it was the most amount of dust I've ever driven in my whole life I'm sure other well, people Well yeah cuz you, you you did a morning race also so you knew how the dust was just sitting there was no wind pushing it out yeah. of the way So that's anybody tough. that yeah, it was just yeah, and anybody that's never been crazy. to a desert race, yeah, dude, so crazy. And anybody that's never been to a desert race that hasn't seen this type of dust, like imagine going like i don't know in your garage and just pouring talcum powder in yeah, front of a fan that's what it looks like and just having it hit you in the face and then not being able to see like your front bumper like it's so crazy and so what ryan did when he's talking about when he got up on the other dude's bumper that was exactly what you're supposed to do because then you're not getting the dust in your face you're getting right. the dust under the car sure sure so he did the perfect right. thing but uh <sighs> unfortunately yeah, that's your a reaction risk. time doesn't yeah, it kind of uh, screws you when a big old rock is just sticking out at you. Yeah, and uh, on the part of the trail where, where that first 10 miles where Ryan was at, there's only a small section of, like, uh, clear – it's like wash basically. So it's like just sandy rock. And these washes aren't like sand like normal. These are like rocky washes. Mm -hmm. So um, he didn't get very much. There's some goat trails and stuff. And so he didn't get very much time to be able to make those passes because he was just stuck right behind people like on single track the whole time. Right, right. So, yeah. That, yeah. And then come to find out at what, race mile 12 where you made that, you made another U turn to go back. Then they're like, oh, yeah, it gets nice and wide there where you could have made a pass. So if I would have waited two more miles, would have been a little bit better off. 
Yeah, those areas were a little harder to pass though because you're on the you're wooded to be able to pass somebody, and then those guys right. in front of you would have just tried to dust oh, you wide out. open. Yeah, try to dust you out. So, man, I I still think it was pretty cool, dude. Like you know, desert racing is a really gnarly uh, sport to be able to do, but uh, to see people go through it, and you were out in the desert just uh, trying to fix the car for what three four hours maybe. Yeah, because the, the spot we were in, man. Uh, I mean, once my crew got to me, I think we, they were on the last lap, but there was no retrieving us because no truck to get in there. They would have had gone backwards. So we, uh, we you broke the upper and lower ball joints, which in essence ripped the whole hub and tire and wheel off at the same time. So we, um, once my crew kind of walked me through it, we decided, oh, we'll take the bolts off the sway bar, use those as a makeshift ball joint and kind of bolt the hub and everything back together. And just limped it back. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, then we were about what ten feet from the front gate, and then the front wheel fell off again. So I saw it parked out there. That added insult to injury, (laughs) didn't it? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, I'm just like, leave it here. I'm I'm done with it. I'll come get it later and put it in the trailer. Hey, you know what though? There was probably 500 people that passed by that sucker. So just call it call it a business expense. Good marketing too. Perfect. It's almost like I planned it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but did you have a good time, though, man? Because it looked like no matter what, you were always having a smile on your face. Man, I, it's, I don't think I would be doing this if we weren't having a good time. It's uh, The whole point of us being out there and racing is, you know, just showing that can't, we're involved and we're at the races. So, you know, I can't get bummed on it. You know, I'm out racing and having a great time, and my family gets to come. I, all my friends are involved, so... I, and honestly, I, I've never felt so comfortable in that car. So it, it was it was all working well, except for that one minor detail. So does that mean that you're just going to chill out next time a little bit more and get the car beefed up? Um, no, I'm probably still going to get the car. <laughs> you're still going to go moto style? <laughs> a little yeah, less, I, less, I, less I, Red Bulls. I, literally on the drive home, I, literally on the drive home, I decided I'm going to – sign up for the parker race in two weeks no and, way uh, redeem myself nice yeah oh are you gonna put different uh arms yeah. on there like some with different himes and stuff i think i mean i i think no matter what i was gonna break something so uh zebros who uh sponsors me with the arms and everything they're gonna send me a new set and just send me a spare set of ball joints and and go with that they're trying to come out with a uniball setup which is a little bit more serviceable right um when you're out there you know a ball joint you have to press in and press out so it makes it kind of hard to put spare parts on yeah but at least this time we'll have a backup set of arms and if we can get it back to the pit and fix and keep going yeah that's cool man i was really, really looking forward yeah. to filming some stuff and getting you in the pits and stuff but honestly man oh, I, I, could... know, I know my wife and gunner couldn't stop talking about how you were in the pit like hanging out there just all pumped on it yeah i was having a good time though talking to everybody so like you learn a lot right like when you can just have a, a normal conversation with people and i was so pumped to be hanging out there dude and you know what's funny is that's the first time i've ever hung out in any off-road pits ever was with your crew pretty cool huh yeah it was yeah. badass and then i got to hang out with the shock therapy guys uh on saturday so that was sick too well you think about it it's all like-minded people just amped up on racing so it's just like me and you yeah dude 100 percent. so it's like uh i don't know there's there's hundreds of people in the pits right and all of them are just waiting for that one like three second window that they yep. can see their dudes cruise through <laughs> to do their job and, the, right? and they're yeah. so amped up they'll just jump in with other competitors and start helping them yeah that's so cool i saw that a couple times too that was pretty badass um hey so right. i had uh i had already talked to you a little bit about it today but we had that idea of uh kind of how the uh motocross guys and the pro four guys at the end of the races they'll give away like fenders or they'll give away hoods and stuff at the races that break or whatever it is i think we should do that man with these uh winning at life rs1 uh efx tires and kfc excuse me kmc grenade wheels dude i think it's awesome and the cool part with that is i mean that's that's a very common bolt pattern and offset so anybody really with a polaris can bolt those up and get out there and race yeah exactly so um i honestly think these would be cooler sitting in the garage but whatever these the winners want to do so maybe a little showpiece 
a little show piece for their famous George. <laughs> I don't know about famous, but we definitely had a good time with that uh, with that RS1 build. I know that you, you guys uh, liked helping with it, and we had a bunch of people that were on board yeah. with it. So we actually got a lot of love for it. So I want to give some love back and uh, help some people uh, get some memorabilia in their garage because I think these would be super cool to hang up. Yeah, and and I'll definitely throw in some some hats, t-shirts, and stickers to whoever wins. Oh, rad. That would be super cool. Nice. Yeah, so they can have uh, a yeah. memorabilia and they can get some swag. Dude, can, thanks. Can you find me a yep, candle? Yep, got to lay some out, right? Can you yeah. find me a candle, though? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like Casey wants yeah. a candle. <laughs> yeah, I'll stash one for you. Next time, there's a couple in the chase truck. Uh, when George sees me, we'll, we'll hand them over. <laughs> nice. Sweet, dude. The smell of victory. Well, um, I think we all deserve the smell of victory this weekend. Yep. Uh, none of us, uh, me or you, got on the uh, podium, but we still had an awesome 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 weekend dude it was really cool to see all you guys um what's that comment say i can't read it so i i wasn't sure if you had remember before we went on i was like do you see what robert blanton posted i haven't been able to look at my phone today dude it's insane oh yeah he posted a really cool setup for you so what is it so what 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 are you feeling should we well, i took a picture with him at the races no it's freaking badass but i i nope. don't what yeah what what's your feeling do we throw it out now what is it I, I can't see that. Good. Hold on. Just chill. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty badass. It's pretty badass. How about yep. I actually screenshotted it, and I'll take a picture, or I'll show you the picture. But I need we'll, to look. Did he post something I need did. to look at? Yeah, hang tight, guys. Okay. Well, um, Ryan and I, I can't freaking see that. Thing, I don't dude. want it's you to too read far it. Away. I don't want you to read it yet. Well, anyway, so Ryan's going to give away all these. Uh, li- well, you keep talking then because I'm going to read this. I don't want to be like uh, – uh, silent right here. So, Ryan, I'm thinking... Um, <laughs> or I can read it out loud. Yeah, actually read it out loud. The Warfighter Made Perseverance yeah, Award... Yeah, definitely read it out loud. The Warfighter Made Perseverance Award winner from 2020 UTV World Championship is... An, it's me? It's you, dude. No way! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, right before, I can, I right before we went on, I start crying. I'll, 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 I'll do oh. it. I don't want to cry on the yeah, show, right dude. Yeah, we went on, I saw it. Yep, yep, it popped up. I know, and I was like, man, does he know? Does he? So, Warfighter no, I had Man no idea. Perseverance <laughs> Award winner from 2020 UTV World Champion is none other than George Hamill. After suffering a near-fatal accident at last year's race, George overcame adversity, and with the help of his family and great people at Scanlon Motorsports Group, George entered the race, and George entered and finished this year's UTV World Championship in a Polaris. Shoot, I don't have the rest of it. Dude, so badass! Talk about uh, we were just so talking about awesome. we were just talking about how um how awesome that racing community is, and especially in this specific uh, genre. Dude, I'm right? not gonna be able to hold it together right now. Pretty awesome. So <laughs> high five to you from everybody. Well, hey, at least this way, at least this way, you got on the podium in one way. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. Well, thank Absolutely. you to Robert and all those guys, man. That's bitching. There's more. To I it. saw them carrying that. that thing around too. I took a picture of it. That's so cool. Dude, so that's cool. rad. Well, now you get to hang it in your, uh, on your mantle. Dude, yeah, we're giving away these things, and I will get an award, man. <laughs> yeah, how cool that's is that? fucking sweet. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's better than that um, It's better than that cup that I re-gifted you for your <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, yeah, man. I don't good. know what to do now. I got to keep control of this show, and I'm fucking balling up, like, dude. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Shit, man. Well, thank you guys very much for... Uh, blowing me out right now. <laughs> so that's that was Jer- hey, well, you- Sorry, Ryan. So Jeremiah had put that up there early in the show. He probably didn't know that you didn't see it. So he said, "Congrats to your Warfighter Made Award. So stoked you got back out to racing." And then, oh, uh, that's Al- what it says. Yeah, and Alfonso says, "Do it live." It actually none of this was planned or scripted. It actually just fell in line, perfect. So perfect. Yeah, there's uh Jeremiah. Here's the reaction, dude. I I haven't been able to look at my. Now I feel bad because I didn't like <laughs> check on my phone. Dude, I've been so busy. You got to put on the show, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely what I would like to do, but that's definitely not what what I'm doing. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so fuck, man. Thanks you so much, Robert, and all those guys. That's that's so awesome. There's so many deserving people out there. I mean, Ryan just talked about being out in the desert for four hours. I didn't have to sit out in the desert, man. So um, no, dude, you deserve it more than anyone. I really appreciate that. That's super super cool. Where do I get to check it out? So it was on, yeah, I was trying to figure that out too. It was definitely on Robert's um, page. I'll have to just give him a call after this. I can give him a call after this. Dude, that's so rad. 
Um, all right, dude. Well, now that we got me all balled up, like I said, um, we're going to get another phone call coming in in just a sec, Ryan. So like I said, though, dude, no me, worries, guys. meeting your crew and hanging out and stuff was super, super cool this weekend. I was so amped for everybody to get back to the track and to see the smile on everybody's face, to see the smile on your face, your family's face, even in the adversity was so cool, dude. Dude, it's, it's what we live for. And, you know, I'm, I, I was just stoked you were out there having, having a good time. So. If, if you are in the area or you want to come out to Parker in two weeks, same invite, dude. If you want to come out, roll around in the four-seater, it's there for you. Yeah, that would be super cool. Well, uh, yeah, I might actually take you up on that. It, it would be kind of neat. Um, one of these days, I'm yeah, go ahead and answer it, Case. Um, I'm going to be able to want to get back to the track because I was looking at some of my lap times, and even with a uh, blown-out tire, I was still uh, up there with the leaders, so I got to make sure I can do better. It was pretty neat. So I'll explain uh, my story, and uh, if you don't have the time to listen to the show, I'll give you a buzz this week. <laughs> Sounds good, dude. Yeah, hit me up, and we'll go over some stuff. Thanks, homie. I appreciate it, and good job this weekend. Thanks, Ryan. We'll see you. Hey, hey, and congrats, man. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thanks, homie. Appreciate it. Thanks. Later. Uh, could you put them on the big screen, please? Case? I can. So, uh, God, dude, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the show. Like, I feel like I got to gather it up. Like, I feel like a, a girl just sitting here crying, man, like after she broke up with her boyfriend or something. <laughs> I don't really know what to do. Um, but uh, I'll bet these guys know what to do. So uh, click on, the, uh, on their screen a little bit. So uh, we'd like to welcome uh, two of the younger kids – at uh, the UTV World Championship with some of the uh, veteran racers in the side-by-side. -side. Yeah, just click right there. Uh, some of the veteran racers in the side-by-side -side world, uh, Clayton and Wyatt Matlock with their parents, Wayne and Kristen. How are you guys doing? What's up, guys? Oh, can you speak up a little bit? We can't hear you. I don't know if it's uh, low audio or not. Oh, no. Can you hear him, Case? No? Nope. Go ahead and try it again, Kristen. I'm sorry we can't hear you. Uh-oh, we got bad audio. That's what I get for having uh, to take the whole studio with me up to... Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Let's see if I can find out what's wrong. Give us uh, give us just a second, guys. So, Case, what... Uh, so what how do, do we, think? yeah, so how do we, how do we, um, we need to talk to Robert is what we need to talk to. And yeah. I'm sure everybody has tons to say about it. I was pretty stoked the second I saw it. Yeah, that is pretty cool, man. But I don't know what, uh, I don't even know what to like, what to think about it right now. Like, I still feel like I'm trying to have to hold it together. Um, let's see if we can, uh, just have Kristen, uh, call in to, uh, call in on the phone. I'm going to send her a, uh, a text message so that she can. Give us a buzz. So, dude, I really don't know what to do. I feel like I'm choking on the show right now just because of all this crap, man. Like, I can't believe that they, that they gave that to me. It's so cool. So maybe uh, Kristen can check her phone right now and uh, give us a buzz on the audio. We'll still be able to see you on the, uh, on the screen, Kristen. We're going to keep you on FaceTime. But maybe you could use one of your other phones to be able to uh, – uh, call that number that I just sent over, and we can get you on the audio as well. So I got to be able to figure out how to check this out, man. Um, it looks like a bunch of comments are coming in too. That's pretty cool. So the UTV World Championship was just insane, man. And I want to see how these kids, like, managed it, right? Because was this their first for them? I don't know. I think so. But for – for a kid, like Wayne and Kristen, they could manage it pretty easy, right? But, right. like, for the kids, it's going to be, like, a new thing going through all this rough terrain and stuff. Right. Uh, Kristen, can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you guys now. Can you hear us? Okay. Thanks, Wayne. I appreciate you guys going through that with us. We had a couple of technical difficulties, it seems like, today. But thank yeah, you we guys. Went, uh, we can hear you guys the whole time. Yeah, that's weird, Bummer. man. So we had uh, – I took the studio actually up with me to Havasu, so uh, plugging some stuff back in. Maybe I missed a wire or something. I got my uh, – I need to hire a mechanic. <laughs> I think we got it. Well, okay. Thank you, guys. So I muted the, the FaceTime on my phone. You can still see us, though. Yeah, yep. and we can hear you guys, too. So um, thank you okay, very cool. much. Thank you very much for being our technical crutch. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, let's – let me catch up on these real quick. So Jeremiah – Jeremiah says, cool thing is is I'm a vet, 
It's well deserved from the veterans to you, George. You are a gangster. <laughs> awesome. And then our <laughs> oh, buddy, you. our buddy, our buddy Caden says, uh, "So well deserved, George. Congrats." Thanks, Caden. I appreciate. Caden's going to be coming up in a little bit here. So, um, yeah, going back to the kids, man. So. What did you guys think? Uh, so maybe you guys could tell us who you are first. I don't know uh, how many other interviews that you had, but why don't you start first, Clayton, and then Big Brother can go after that. Um, I'm Clayton Matlock. And what class do you race, Clayton? And in that- <laughs> what class do you race? Um, I race the 170 class. In uh, Polaris Razor 170, right? Yeah. Right on. And then how about Big Bro? So we got Wyatt Matlock there. What do you race, Wyatt? Yeah. Uh, I actually race the RS1 Junior class. Right on, dude. So you're riding the big boy car, just like the one that I drove, right? Yep. That's pretty sweet. So Casey and I were just talking a little bit while we were, uh, you, your mom was doing all the technical stuff for us. We were just saying that, you know, like your dad and your mom have seen all kinds of different types of terrain and rocks and all kinds of stuff in Mexico, the United States. But what kind of stuff have you guys seen compared to what you guys got to drive on at the UTV World Championship? Because to me, man, it was gnarly. It was rough. Yeah, usually the dirt series are not that rough. Yeah, because it it's motocross, right? It's like more motocross? Yeah. Yeah, it is. The what, dirt series is. What about you, Clayton? How, uh, how about the terrain for you? Um, It was kind of broke, not much. It was mostly turns and mostly competitors that I had to pass. So I saw a couple pictures of you, dude. You were banging bars with all those people, man. You were getting in there, throwing it sideways, roosting people. It was pretty bad. I got the whole shot. Woo! <laughs> Heck yeah! How was that, man? Did you just like pin it, and your car just was shredding down the start, or what? I um, I saw him say one, and then I just floored it. <laughs> Like, ready to go? <laughs> He's been cooped up yeah. and ready to go, Giving too. away all the secrets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's all right. And then what about you, Wyatt? How was your whole shot? Uh, I actually didn't get the whole shot. You don't really want the whole shot in the RS1 class, because otherwise you get bumped around and flipped. Hey, so I've so- learned my lesson. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang, really? Maybe you could give us a little bit yep. more info on that. Have you flipped over before? Yeah. Uh, me and my dad... We're out on a big ride, and I went into a turn fast, and there was a bush in the center of the turn, and I hit it, and I rolled it. Oh, crap, man. Would you, was your dad able to help you get it back on all four wheels? Yep. Yeah, there, there wasn't four wheels left to put it on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least he right. more than roll it. He rolled it about, rolled it about three times. <laughs> so he, he got a good one out of the way right away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's a little timid nowadays, but... He's picking up his speed, just just needs more seat time to get comfortable again. That's really, really cool. Well, maybe you guys could tell us uh, how old you are. How old are you, Wyatt? Um, I am 11 years old. And what about you, Clayton? I'm 8 years old. Dang, so you guys are starting pretty young, man. How, uh, how does it feel getting out there and racing like mom and dad do? It's pretty fun. Do you guys want to do it as a career or... Um, or- or you guys want to do something else? I want to do it as a career. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool, right? Dude, who wants to yeah, build ca- yeah. who wants to like build cabinets and stuff? Like we want to be <laughs> off-road racers. Yeah. We'll let, we'll let dad do that. I guess that. I want to do it as a career when I grow up too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You something else that you want to do too though. Yeah, what is, what is it you want to do What else do you want to do? Uh Great. Now I gotta think. <laughs> now you gotta think. Well, why? Why you think? I can tell you that there's four other people other than the kids here that would love to be off-road racers as a profession as well. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what so is what it that? I want to be a singer, and I also um want to be a nitro circus guy. Really? Nice. That's pretty cool. So I got two questions because there's some specifics that go behind those, right? Like, first of all, the easy one is what kind of singer do you want to be? Um, like country singer, rap singer, rock singer, pop singer. Country singer. 
You want to be a country singer. Okay, so that's good. And then second, in Nitro Circus, do you know how many different, like, skills and disciplines are there? There's, like, a million. Like, there's a guy that rides a wheelchair on a half pipe. Have you seen that, dude? Yeah. He's insane. And then so they have the guys that do, like, the crazy stunts that are, like, I don't know. They could, like, go in, like, a canoe over the half pipe. Garbage can. <laughs> yeah, garbage can. Yeah. And then they got the guys that are sending it, like, Travis Pastrana on a dirt bike. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to drive a Razor in Nitro Circus. Nice. That would be pretty sweet, man. Have you seen the track that Travis Pastrana has at his house? It looks pretty awesome for a mini Razors. Yeah. We're planning on going to his house. Oh, are you? Maybe yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you're already making plans in your head and mom has to figure out how to <laughs> yeah. how to attack that plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Wyatt? Did you figure out what you want to do? Yeah, I probably want to be a game warden as a um, career, too. What did he say? A game warden. Oh, really? That's a good one. Dude, that is a really good one. Super I, cool. I bet you Thank if you, you figured out some of that stuff, you could teach a lot of those off-roaders like some serious knowledge, man, because a lot of those guys are into that <laughs> stuff. Thank you. That would be pretty cool, man. I think both of those are good, but I think no matter what, like when you talk about these things, whether it be a game warden, a country singer, or even a Nitro Circus athlete, all of those take a ton of dedication and practice to be able to do. So you got to study and work your butts off to be able to do that, right? Yeah. Yep. And sell more cabinets. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) So, what did you guys think of the races then? Give me your guys' race recap. So, uh, let's do yours first, Clay. Go ahead, Go ahead tell them how your race went. <laughs> Give them a play by play. Yeah, so Wait. you you got you got the whole shot. Then what's happened next? Oh, um, <laughs> I after you got the whole shot, what happened? Did you did you stay out front? Um, someone asked me on the turn away and then I tried to bump up back there and then I actually at the end of the race I got 12 and somebody plumbed it into a tree <laughs> did you get mad at him and then, and then I got 12th place did you get tangled up in a little pile up there yeah yeah third lap. how'd you get out of the pile up um I backed up no, very dramatic. Yeah, that was pretty dramatic. But so I, if, if anybody wants to see, we'll post some stuff on social media. And if you want to look at Wayne or Kristen's uh, social media, uh, you can check out some of the play-by-play stuff that he was talking about in actual visuals with uh, the pictures and stuff. Some of the cool pictures that I saw were obviously mom and dad cheering them on, at, you know, having them go, taking pictures on the podium and stuff. Um, but one of the pictures that Kristen sent over to me that stood out the most was him getting chased by a pack of 170s. It was like a pack of wolves, dude, <laughs> chasing prey, man. Because nice. he, he whole shot. Well, and I know this section because it was coming through the like the pit area. Mm-hmm. And this is where these kids are full wood, right? They're like wide open. And I know that Clayton was just like mashing the throttle because these three or four dudes were right behind him trying to catch up. So cool. that must have felt super cool for him to go through that. Did it feel pretty neat, Clayton? Um, I actually didn't see him behind me. Oh, you were just looking forward? Tunnel vision. Good. I was trying not to flip. <laughs> nice. Look at that, dude. He's spoken like a true racer, just yep. looking forward, concentrating on his own deal. <laughs> That's right. All right, Wyatt, we only have uh, five minutes left, so maybe you can give us your race recap. How You said you kind of took it easy on the start to manage the race a little bit different than Clayton did, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to make it easy so I wouldn't wind up in a ditch or something. <laughs> there's actually a couple cars. Yeah, there's a couple cars that I found without tires on the course, and one of them was in a ditch with its wheels all spread out. Holy cow, man. <laughs> you definitely don't want to do that because your dad uh, doesn't want to fix the car after that first time you flipped over. Yeah. Uh, How did you think the track yeah, was, like, with all, the, with all the crazy terrain and stuff like that? How did you do managing the track? It described the dust and everything. Yeah. Tom, you can see. Yeah, I couldn't see at all because it was so powdery out there. There There's so much dust. And whenever a car got around you, 
you would try to get around them and you can't see them because the dust is that thick. Dude, I totally agree with that. So I was getting roosted. Like, it wasn't on the same track you were on, but I was getting roosted going up one of the washes so bad. And I took dust for, I don't know, a good mile and a half or so. And then so finally I just got out of the main line and I just went bombing through the bushes. Like, I felt like I told my uh, my crew, I was like, I felt like I was driving through a cornfield. There was so much shrapnel flying over the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually had to do that one time because there was a car, it was a, like a canyon, and his tire fell off and he got wedged in between them, so I had to go up the hill and back down the hill. Holy cow, man. Were yeah. you able Were you able to manage it pretty easy? Like, did you see the line where you needed to go and stuff? Yeah, I okay. did. That's pretty cool. In desert racing, that's a huge, huge plus when you have that skill set to be able to manage those uh like spur of the moment things and be able to find lines and choose lines. So I think you're probably learning from a couple of the best drivers in the world right behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. Thank you. So does does that little sigh mean don't talk about mom and dad? Let's talk about the kids more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about my whole shot. <laughs> so yeah. So, so I I first of all I think you guys did really well. I love those pictures that you guys all took together, and I'm really excited that both of you guys had such a good time because uh, we all had a really awesome time being back at the races too. So it was probably neat for you guys to be uh, with all your friends and family and everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I mean, it's been camping and everything. Yeah, we, we had a blast camping. It was kind of like a parking lot that we were camping at, but we had our RC cars, and I found like a little track that we can do. There's an RC car park there. And oh, really? Broke it. Hey, so you want to know a secret? <laughs> yeah. broke it. Till he broke it. Yeah, till he broke it. You want to know but, a secret? The guy sitting right next to me, his name's Casey. He's a professional RC car driver. A long time ago. Oh. I don't know. He can go pretty fast with the RC cars. Have you ever seen like when dirt bike guys like go up sideways and they whip it in the air? They call it like a Bubba scrub or like when they whip it in the style over the finish line. Well, he can do yeah. that. He can do that with the RC car. It's all on the wrist. Oh, nice. It's all on the wrist. It's, wow. it's pretty <laughs> awesome, man. So, you know, what's funny is that those RC cars, uh, we talked with your dad a little bit about it before, about staying up till two in the morning working on stuff. Those RC cars teach you a lot because they have the same uh, standard principles of shock geometry and the way the suspension works, camber, tow, all of these kind of cool things that you can learn from RC cars that you can apply to your regular big car uh, as you start getting faster and faster. Yeah. It's pretty. It's just like a scaled down version. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We don't run into our key car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my brother's uh, trying to drive my brother's, but his, um, his steering was all messed up on it, so it only drives straight instead of turning. Oh, crap, turn. man. <laughs> uh well, we got to get going, yeah. guys, but we, we wanted to uh, okay. just let you guys know that somebody commented in and wanted to say hi to you. Can you see who that is, Casey? Yeah, Kathy Marshall King. Hi, Wyatt and Clayton. Do you know who Kathy Marshall King is? Oh, yeah, that's my nan. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, she All wanted right. to say hi to you guys. We really appreciate you guys calling in and, and having fun with us. So um, before we hang up, I definitely want to see if uh, if I could ask you guys. I talked to your mom a little bit about this, and she said it was okay just as long as you guys had time. I'd like to do a show with you guys uh, and just talk with you guys um, you know, about what you guys want to do in the future, understand how much you like off-road racing, and maybe we'll even do are you smarter than a third grader questions to your parents. Mm. Be fun. I, I might lose that one. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty fun. Well, hey, we got Justin Smith calling in, so we're going to let you guys go, okay? Have a great night, all right? All right. Thanks, having Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys bye. very much. Bye. Hey, guys. Great job this weekend, okay, guys? Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's super cool. Especially with the the kids, you know what I mean? Like, it's always so neat to see, like, the different perspective on what – what they go through during the week. Like, so both well, of them, what was the youngest one? Wyatt? Is that Wyatt? Uh, Clayton, Clayton was the younger one Clayton. and Wyatt was, yeah. I love how he was, he was hanging his hat on. I got the whole shot. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I love it. He was super pumped he on was. that. Right? That was great. 
I just think it's super cool because uh, the perspective is so so much different than you know what our perspective is, you right. know, because there's so much seriousness with it. So it's neat to be able to see what the, what the kids are doing. I mean, how pumped was he that he was just going with the RC cars? You know what I mean? Totally. So uh, I think we got Justin Smith on the line. What's up, Justin? What's up, boys? What's up? Oh happening? well, uh, I've been having a hard time holding together this freaking show, man. Uh, so Casey and well, it was a complete surprise to me, but the Warfighter guys gave me the Perseverance Award this year. <laughs> that that should be an annual thing given out to the biggest badass that you can come up with every year. <laughs> yeah, so they do actually do it every year, and uh, uh, you know, this year, fortunately, I was the one that got it. I mean, I, I don't want to be ever up for it again because you have to really persevere <laughs> through it but uh, <coughs> it was cool because uh the problem is is i'm like acting like a little girl that just broke up with her boyfriend though because i've been like super emotional about it because it kind of just uh, stirs up some stuff with me because it really does mean a lot to me that everybody in the side-by-side industry supports the the people so much dude can can anyone honestly have any clue how much effort work and and a uh, heartache and anything else, I, I mean, I could probably put 17 different adjectives that go went into your recovery and then to go and put that into a race the first time back um, that probably brings up a whole nother list of things that you have to overcome mentally and physically to do mm-hmm. and then actually finish it. I, I mean, you know, we were following you and I, I'm, I, maybe I shouldn't share this, but I'm gonna, the, one mile from the finish, you knew you were finishing this race and you broke down and you were on the radio telling everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. And we could hear it in your voice that you let it go. And it was so emotional for you to thank everyone that was involved as you were finishing this race that we were above you and we actually lost it too. No way. Really? That's awesome. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I looked, I looked at Dominic and, and he's, he, he's welling up and I'm over here. I'm dropping a tear and Chase is in the back, you know, like puking in a, in a purple, you know, puke bag. <laughs> he had a little bit of sickness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did. It, it was, it was definitely emotional for me. I, I, I think I told you, but I told my crew, like when I was crossing the finish line, um, like that whole last straightaway basically where you started where you broke the rear axles like i started crying from there and it felt like by the time i crossed the finish line somebody sprayed me with a freaking hose because i had so many tears on my face i couldn't i was like i gotta get it together before i get back to the truck (laughs) (laughs) we can laugh about it now man but that that's a pile of an emotion that's a pile of of work put into a very short amount of time to finish and I, I can't even imagine. I have no idea. I just was lucky enough to feel a piece of it, and it was badass. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. And I think the 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 whole show is like tonight was based upon like the support mechanisms, right? So, um, there's been some guys that did really well at the UTV World Championship. I feel like I did well. I even looked at some of the lap times and stuff. And even with the flat tire on the last lap, if I didn't have that tire, I would have been almost uh, almost race winning speed, like with even with my fucked up head. <laughs> so it. It was neat Dude, to be I able th- to see. I thought, you, I thought you killed it. I mean, we, we, we witnessed you pass five, six, seven guys. You never got passed. Nobody even got close to you. So you're keeping pace, and you're keeping pace for the first time out and the first time in a car. I mean, the first time back and the first time in a car. You don't have time in it. You got, you know, 30, 40 miles. That's nothing. Yeah. Well, and then on the, on the second lap with a flat tire, nobody came up to you. It's, it was amazing. We were so excited. Yeah, it was cool, and like I was telling Casey earlier, that it was neat just to have you guys following me around the helicopter. I felt like a rock star. So even if I got last place and sat out there and had you guys for a little bit, I would have still been totally happy. It sure looked cool. That's for sure. Yeah, so let's go back to the uh, support mechanisms because uh, I want to tie that in a little bit. So um, first of all, thank you very much for being a support mechanism for us during this project, uh, winning at Life RS1 build, and uh, then following up, taking us out uh, and being part of your crew. And we got to eat and hang out with all of you and the shock therapy family. Um, but then the next day when it uh, came race day for you, um, you took off your support hat and you started, you know, getting your race face on. And it was really interesting to me to be able to see the difference in um, – 
focus that I saw in your in your face, your demeanor, and the things that you had. You have such a fantastic team behind you that you were able to switch gears and, and put all of the focus into driving, concentrating on doing well in the race, the communication aspect. It was really, really cool to see because that's the first time I've ever seen such a professional race team in the pits. Thank you for saying that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of my guys. They are, are the reason that we can do this. They really, really are. We, <clears throat> we have an amazing crew. Um, I say it over and over and over again. And even though I do, it's not enough because we couldn't do it without all of our guys. Um, they get along like their family. They act like their family. And, and I mean, like in talking smack, like brothers and like, you know, wrestling, like brothers and, um, and supporting each other when one's down, the other one picks them up. That's pretty much our whole crew. And, you know, we want to go to a race and we want to have fun. If it's not fun, we're not going to do it. But when it's race day, everybody puts on their hat and it's the, the hat has a list of jobs on it and they all are, are exactly on with their 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 list and uh, they take it really really serious and um so for them i think it's only um fitting that i can try and take it the, my job uh, as serious as i possibly can some people might because i'm pretty talkative normally and pretty upbeat normally but like race day i pretty much wake up and i don't say much i'm kind of quiet i think about the free run i think about everything as much as i can I, i'm just pretty much concentrating on what's going to happen and all the guys in the crew already know that they don't even ask me anything. They don't ask questions. They don't, they don't even bug me. I, they just leave me alone. And I, I don't mean like in a prima donna way. It's more like a business. I think concentrate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Some people yeah, like to be talked done. to the whole time. Some people like to concentrate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and before the race, if we're sitting in like pit lane and maybe they're late or we might sit there for an hour, I can probably fall asleep in the car. I mean, I'm not, like nervous or wound up, but I'm just really just thinking about it heavily. That's kind of my thing, I guess. Yeah. And I could tell that demeanor. It was like you switched into, into race mode or whatever. It was, it was pretty cool to see though, because man, like you stuttered a little bit with your foot on the, on the whole shot, but you still got the whole shot because you were so determined. So after that, it just seemed like, all right, Focus, focus, focus. So it was uh, all race business, we'll call it. Like, you got out there. You started, like, really honestly, man. You were killing it. You guys were ripping. Um, what, maybe give, take us through, like, the first, I don't know, lap and a half, two laps. Because the speed that you guys were going, when I was sitting in the pits thinking about my race, I was thinking, how the hell are they going this fast on a course that is so brutal, beat up, and dusty? So um, for us, it was really important to win that whole shot because we knew the race was all about dust, you know, to have 40 cars on a 30 mile course and the course has got, you know, it's pretty much through a lot of uh, washes or canyons. And so the dust isn't going to blow away. We knew that dust was probably the biggest factor <clears throat> and we were starting mid packs. So there's, you know, 19 cars ahead of us. Um, at least we didn't want to follow the guy that we started with immediately and lose a bunch of stuff. So we got real lucky, fortunate, um, got the, we won to the first corner. How's that? I right. was slow off the line, but we ended up winning to the end and, um, kind of settled in real quick to a, a pace that was going to not get flats because the course is full of rocks, uh, not roll a car. Cause of course is nothing but rutted corners, easy to roll. And, um, when you're dealing with dust, then those two things are a problem because you, you're following somebody, you can't see what's going on. You end up, you know, hitting a rock and flattening the tire, ripping a front end off. We just didn't want to be that guy. So we figured that the first two laps were going to be kind of a cruise. And, uh, luckily the, our, our first lap was only two minutes off the leader. We thought that was pretty good considering, you know, the dust and people that we had to be behind. And, right. uh, second lap was a little bit slower. And it was because the wind that we did have died down and there was more dust. Yep. And our third lap, we tried to turn it up a bit. And I think that we ended up coming within 30 seconds of the leader's pace until we blew the axles out of the car. And it's, um, it's hard to describe 
that um, a lot of people have asked today, you know, how'd you do that? They're RCVs, their biggest thing ever. We don't break them. We run them for 2,000 miles without an issue. But let me explain one thing real quick. If you shove an axle in a car and it's got on the power twist direction, axles twist about 90 degrees and they come back to their happy place. And as long as they're twisting in the same direction all the time, right. then they're fine. You take an axle out and you put it, you twist it, you spin it around or, re, or forget which side it was on on the car, put it in backwards. You'll break it the very first time that you go around a corner and, sn- and slam on the throttle. Yeah, it doesn't, it's twist. not flexing in the same the direction, other direction, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, we've got these big giant axles in the car and it, they've been fine forever. I came into, you know, the, George, you know, there's very few straightaways in this course, but it was one of the few at the very end that was like 75 mile an hour. Right. And, um, it was almost like a panic stop attacking the corner, all the brakes you had for this right hand corner. And we come into it and the braking bumps are about a foot tall. Yeah. And 2000 pounds, 2200 pound, pound, pound car. Would it- Shit, I wish, bro. My car's like 2,650 pounds. Holy He's shit. He's a heavy sucker. <laughs> yeah. So heavy, heavy. And, and then when, you got me and Jeff, and we are no lightweights. And when he's <laughs> talking about the braking bumps case, they're like Glen Helen motocross braking bumps times 10. They're huge. I mean, they're, they've been beat up all for three days with of racing. Like, for me, it was pretty gnarly. For them, they were after two more days of racing oh, at the I end. They were, so they were. Especially at the end like that. Right. It's full, full break. You're right. just cutting those so things when, in yeah when he's so, talking about braking bumps it's not we like went, skipping chatter bumps it's like braking bumps where the wheels leave the ground boom boom, boom. For, for two feet three feet and then smack the ground again oh yeah that's not good exactly george and so we went from 70 to 20 and in that braking section i went it, it went pop pop and out, out of the out of that corner it just revved up and had very little acceleration and i thought it was actually the clutch I figured, hey, we blew the secondary out of the sucker again. We got RPM and no mile an hour, and we're nursing it back. So we tell the pit, we tell the crew, hey, get throw a secondary on it, because typically we do blow up secondaries in braking bumps. And uh, we get to the pit, and they pull the cover off. And before they got the cover off, they come over and go, hey, you got no axles in the back of this thing. Uh, yep. <laughs> we had no clue. We drove it in two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, for a mile and a half. And one axle was completely gone. Like it had broke and exited the trans and the other, other axle um, broke and it was sitting there just spinning around, smacking the alternator side and water pump and exhaust beating around the, that side. And, and we didn't even know it. I mean, it sounds like an idiot not knowing you broke axles, but, but like we just didn't know it just didn't do anything we wanted. And it felt like other things that we thought like clutching. Well, yeah, and then so the you, crew you, jumped on it. You only had a mile and a half, though, too. So you're only you only notice that this error is happening for sixty seconds. Um, true, and 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 you know the car still moved. It was just not moving very well and had a ton of RPM, like like maybe it was a clutch. But the guys figured it out instantly. Um, they jumped into into gear. They ended up putting two axles on the car in twenty two minutes. Yep, nice. I mean, if anyone's ever tried to do that, they know that's fast. Yeah, absolutely. And so I was actually, and that's one of the things that uh, that sparked me to say that how good the crew was. So um, Darren was just like a freaking mad scientist over there. He goes, this, this, this. He had all of it lined up for all the dudes. Right when he saw it happen, he knew the next procedure, the next procedure, the next procedure, direction, direction, direction. And that's what made it so that the, the stop was so quick because all of the guys followed uh, his uh, his direction just executed and made it so that it could happen and he could get back out there. Um, but, and if you, we have it on video and I think that, uh, Kenny, one of your media guys got it on video too. It would be really cool for people, even though it's 12 minutes, it'd be really cool for people to see that type of work coming together. I don't know if you guys want to release that on social media or anything, but, um, Oh yeah, We're, we'll do it, man. I think, I think that Chase is probably going to do it as like a fast motion. <clears throat> or, you know, and, and speed it up, but we'll show all of it. And and if somebody wants to see the full length, we'll probably put that up there too. I'm super proud of them, man. They, they just jump in and they go for it. I yeah. mean, they were, they were, you know, you know, wrist deep in CV grease. That sucks. And so, it's hot. 
Yeah, and my so, dad my dad's been in the out. my dad's been in the mechanical automotive industry for his whole life, right? And he was just like, I've never seen guys work that professionally together in such a quick amount of time. It was awesome to see. Like yeah, I it can was like picture it. It just sounds Yeah, I mean like you always want to say compare compare it to F one pit stops, right? But nothing can be compared to that. This is off road. And to see the execution, there was a guy sitting there uh replacing his uh front end, like tie rods and stuff like what Ryan broke. Or excuse me, uh upper arms and tie rods and stuff like what Ryan broke, it took them two hours. And they did it in 22 minutes for a whole axle set. Like, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It's pretty insane. Uh, we had a comment come in from, uh, from John, John that said, so is the shock loading the axle? I think I can answer this, but maybe you'd be a better one to answer it, Justin. Is the shock loading the axle? Is yeah, that the question? so I think what he's saying, yeah, the shock always loads the axle, but you have the CV joints to take care of that, so it's moving up and down. What actually, in Justin's case, what broke the axle was the reverse yeah. uh, force on the axles in those large braking bumps. So the metal was twisting backwards one way. Backwards rotation. Yeah, backwards rotation. So the metal is, is flexible in one direction, and then when it becomes unflexible in the other direction, it just loses it, and that, that's it loses all its... Pretty much pops. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how axles work. They're designed to twist a bit, and as soon as you twist in the other direction, they're gone. Yeah, exactly. And these, the axles that he uses on that car are no, like, they're big axles, like Justin said. So the CVs and everything are made to last. So when you have a weak link, well, we won't call it a weak link. When you have a force like that in reverse manner, it there's no, it doesn't. There's nothing that can you can do. As, as I'm hearing you guys talk right. about it, I'm, like, picturing it's almost like they're heat treated that way from running. Like it's obviously the twist, but I'll um, bet you there's a there's a portion of heat in it too. I would well bet. they when when you you're, when they break in yeah. You're sort of onto something, but I'll finish what you're what you're kind of describing. So the material that most of these axles are made of, the best material ever is 300 M. 300 M is both strong, slightly brittle, mm -hmm. and fre flexible, and these are all opposites. Sure. Yeah. But exactly. But the way 300 M works. Once it decides or once it's been taught the direction to twist. Right, exactly. It'll do that its whole life. Sure, sure. But as soon as it goes the other direction, gone. Right. And so by by breaking bump the bump bumping the axles, we basically tranny slammed the axles in reverse right. twenty times into a corner and snapped them. That's yeah. that's just it. Period. Yeah. So in other words, I just I, I can't panic stop a car through braking bumps. <laughs> That's but the short by version. definition. <laughs> if you're coming in hot, you're panicked. So right. I don't know, I'm not sure how to not do it. <laughs> yeah, but that's just right. one of those things you live right. and learn, right? Like it would have been better just to kind of roll off the gas and blow out the corner and then hit the easy to go say, around right? Or yeah, easy well, to say. Yeah. lesson learned. If you I guess. can blow the yeah. corner, if there's not a if there's not a tree, a car, or a cliff, then yeah, yeah. you can do that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Crew so chief. My, Brian, usually yes. the corners are there for a reason, though. My crew chief just chimed in and said, what's up, too? So we only got a couple of minutes left, Justin, so maybe take us through the last portion of the race. So we left the pits with axles. We jammed off, and it was getting dark. Uh, we found out pretty quick that the charging system on the car had also failed. The okay. reason that the charging system failed is the one axle that was sitting there smacking around had smacked the alternator and the stator cover and broke both of them. Oh. And so eight oh, miles later, we had we found out we had no charging system and 16 miles later we ran out of uh, voltage in the batteries and that car shut off and we were done. Yeah. There was nothing we could do about it and no way to get out of it without a jump box or jump. And even though you, know, you jump the car, you're only getting about three miles before the thing shuts off. So we were done. Unfortunately, the guys really put in a ton of effort to not finish is painful. Mm-hmm. At the time, when we came in with broken axles, we were top 10. Uh, when we left the pit with 22 minutes, we were actually, uh, eight miles later, we were sixth because people kept breaking. And when we lost the alternator, all the charging and everything, we were still about sixth or fifth. And we uh, that was on our, coming into our last lap. Yeah, and so, they, they started a good run further, going. They started further back than that too, so they had made up a lot of ground. Man, like I, I like I said before, yeah. like I still can't get over it. And I was telling my dad, I was telling all kinds of people today um, when they were asking me about the show, and I go, I, dude, like. I learned so much this weekend just being a bird, uh, fly on the wall, like just checking these things out because it was amazing to see the prowess and the the everything that people were doing in the pits. Like Justin seems fantastic, but there was a bunch of other teams that were doing a great job as well. Like mm -hmm. I have never sure. ever been 
that's the first time, Justin, I've ever sat in the pits. That's incredible, honestly. Yeah, and I was like blown away at how awesome it was to see all those people doing all that stuff, man. It was freaking sweet. So, all right, man. Well, well we got... I'll tell you what makes the pits amazing. Um, it's it's time outside of it, and you were part of that too. You see how our team hangs out. They're all family, and they work the same way at the race. Dude, we had so many bro conversations, and there was awesome. <laughs> those are those are almost always the, what you take away non, from the non. event. Those dinners, yeah, in my experience, exactly. Yep, a hundred percent, man. Hopefully, um, the badassness of our team <laughs> shows up in the next few races. Um, the car is already torn apart, and we're starting our prep first thing in the morning and uh, we'll have that sucker done and we'll be testing on friday so we're ready for blue water hopefully we can show up and show what we're worth all right bud we'll kick some ass out there and i'll talk to you this week i'm sure hey you guys have a good one man have a great show you too justin you too. Take thanks care. man see you um all right see if we well, let's see if we can get caden on so caden we were having a little bit of audio issues so we might have to have you just call in but let's try it and see what we can do okay bud so I, t- I still can't get over it how rad this uh, this off road industry is when they do this. Can you hear us, Caden? Uh, looks like we still can't hear him. I'm gonna send you a a phone number right now, Caden, so you can just call in, okay, bud? Instead of uh, instead of doing the FaceTime call, we've been having some technical issues today, so I'm sorry that we can't uh, we can't talk to you on FaceTime. We're gonna have to have you just give us a call, okay, dude? So um, yeah, like I was saying, like the the I still can't believe that, it, first of all, that was the first time that I have ever been in the pits, but I still can't believe the awesomeness of all of those people. Like, you've told me a bunch of times, like Joe Whining has told me a bunch of times, like all the craziness that goes on in, like, in the pits, it, that people are waiting for the, the guys to come off course or whatever, and I've only been the driver, right? Right. Like, so I don't ever get to see that. It's pretty freaking sweet. Yeah, man. definitely a different perspective. So, Caden, can you hear us, bud? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome, dude. Well, hey, sorry, man. We saw that you were on FaceTime. We saw that you got all uh, spiffed up for us. But maybe we could just talk about your race this weekend, do the race cap over the phone. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, how was it coming back to uh, California? Were you all amped up on the drive home because you did so well? You got, what, two third places this weekend? Yeah, I got two. I was super stoked. I was really pumped. I wasn't really planning on racing both classes, but... We did it. Happy with the finish. Now we got another, another finish to, to um, finish next week or racing fly. Yeah, that's pretty badass, man. So what, um, what classes did you race? I raced the Youth One Five Seventy and the Youth One Thousand. Which one did you like better? To be honest, the One Thousand. It was more comfortable. My shocks are a little stiff, so I was be- I was getting beat up a lot. What about, and like, I in the – because wasn't the course, like, way harder for the 1,000? Uh, they were the same courses. So oh, I raced okay. the 570 and already knew what I was going up for for the 1,000 because I went back-to-back. So I kind of I kind of got a view of the course before I hopped to the 1,000. Crap, you had to go back-to-back? So you got off one race and then just got in another car and raced again? Yeah, I, I had, like, 10 minutes split between the races. Dang. Then I had to go. Some Gatorade and yeah, a Red but, Bull. Uh, what? Some Gatorade and a Red Bull. I was ha- I was drinking some water. Rob was talking to me. Rob from More Fighter Made. He was uh, clearing my head, getting me ready for the next one, just getting me mentally strong. Dude, well, awesome. first, you know, I'm going to have to, like, skirt the Rob thing because I'm still emotional about it. But <laughs> if there's anybody to give a pep talk, it's Rob. He's like, such an I, awesome. I, I yeah, guarantee, oh like, if I was sitting at the starting line and Rob was giving me a pep talk, I'd be like, dude, I'm going to go out there and win this bad boy. I'm ready to go. I wish we could shoehorn him in right now. Yeah, it would be cool. Um, I'm going to give him a call after this, though. And definitely, thank him. Uh, definitely. So what about uh, – Yeah, like, right after the race. What, right after the race what? Right after the race, he gave me a little pep talk, and like right, like 
right after everything happened, I was like, Mom, what did Rob do? He, like, cleared my mind or did something to me because <laughs> awesome. it worked. <laughs> He's like a messiah, dude. He He's is. like a Mr. Miyagi for the racers. <laughs> well, it just proves that, like, he's yeah. he's doing what he's doing, but he's doing it for the right reasons. Like, he just loves help other people. helping people. End of story. Yeah. So cool. It's pretty rad. Great guy. So uh, maybe you could take us yeah, a little bit uh, through the races. Like, start with the 570 race. Because where did you start at? Did you start up front? Uh, I didn't start first row. It was a little bum. I started second row, though. So we had a second, a 60-second split. So um, from there on, I just had to charge. I couldn't really give up time. Um, I was just pushing. I I had to, had to get by. The dust was gnarly. It was hard to get through, but I ended up making my way through. Got a few passes. And then um, we struggled with traffic and dust. Being beat up, trying to make up all the time I could. It was just, the dust really, really was thick. So it was hard to, like, get through, but I ended up getting through. Yeah. The dust got so bad in the line section that I ended up hitting a wall and flipping. Oh, no way. Yeah, because I was in, like, dust to where I couldn't even see my steering wheel. And um, my brakes got hot, and I couldn't really do anything about it. I ended up hitting a wall, flipping. But I landed on my wheels, and we we're we we're good there. But I just I was beat up. So, Caden, in the in the RC car racing world, we call that a cheetah flip. You know how a cheetah <laughs> flips and it always lands back on its feet. <laughs> it ends yeah. up it ends up actually going faster. <laughs> oh yeah, because you go over. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that was a wild ride. Yeah, it, it was rough. So the what? The track required a lot of focus. What do you think yeah, of the dust, like though? Because, like, the uh, the dust, when I was looking, uh, like, on the race course trying to see through it, I couldn't even barely see my front bumper in a lot of cases. Did you have the same issues? Yeah, I had I had issue, but um, over the years, I've learned to, like, read the track from the different angles. So, if I need to, I'll go to the side to have a little more clear air. But um, we did pre-running, so the pre-running really helped. We had course markers, like – when to watch out for stuff and like stuff like that. See, I always think it's so interesting to see like, cause Justin, Justin Smith was talking about the same strategies and like the way they do it in the pits and stuff. And so Caden's like going out and laying all this stuff out. Like, um, obviously desert racing is different than short course stuff, but I've like never experienced this level of, of desert racing. It's pretty badass. It's super cool. So many variables. I've learned over the years and like tight stuff whenever it's really dusty in a sense to read the walls and kind of see where they're going. And then we would have our markers. So I'd be like, okay, we're 50 feet from a corner. Start entering the corner now. And I kind of just like, we ran the course most of the time, just getting used to it. It was difficult. It was very difficult, but we ended up getting through. It was rough, but we did it. Yeah, dude, you did really well this weekend too. I saw you walking around the pits uh, a couple times, but I wasn't able to watch your races because I was so busy working. What uh, What about the one thousand race? Because it sounded like you didn't even get time to cool off. Rob just talked to you, and then you bailed out again on the race course. Yeah, it was it was gnarly. It, it was a lot better in the one thousand. Suspension was a lot better, but I ended up losing my brakes first lot. I just have been having problems with brakes lately, so. Uh, been diving in a little harder, so had issues with brakes, but I had clear air, so it helped. And then, uh, yeah, it just I didn't roll it, it just found, found my marks easier and just got time to make up time. Sounds like you're getting more used to the bigger cars, too. That's pretty sweet, man. It's kind of graduating to the next level. Yeah, this is the last year in the 570, then we're going to use 1000 next year. Woohoo! Are you stoked? Awesome. Yeah, I'm super happy. It's Dude. fun, smooth. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool to see you up there racing with the big dogs, man. So, um, what I yeah. was gonna what I was gonna ask was, um, obviously you did well at the races, but what was all the other stuff that you guys were doing? Because it sounded like you guys camped out, you got to hang out with friends, family, and you have like a really big support mechanism, which is awesome. Yeah, we um, ended up camping on some BLM land, so we had like our own little area because no one really camped over there so we got to ride pit bikes we like had a good time there was a cook there hung out with my friends and yeah we just had a good time kind of planning everything out 
getting ready. Dude, that that's pretty cool though. What pit bike did you ride? Um, I ended up we ended up getting a new one for my mom, and she's really stoked. Um, but I ended up riding that thing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> we got it for my mom, but Dallas. I took it. Yeah, we stole it. <laughs> yeah, and then I was riding a Dallas and Deegan Gonzalez. Hey, were they riding that uh, old pit bike that I had? Uh, that's Anthony Gonzalez's. Yeah. Oh, they, so yeah, they, we were riding that one too. Uh, Dallas's friend rode that one. That one's fast. Oh, really? So I did a good job putting it together. <laughs> yes, a really good job. That thing's scary. Like sometimes I like walk around, I'm like, this one's too fast. So I um, ordered a new one actually. A 2021, uh, oh, really? yeah, like the whatever it has fuel injected on it. So maybe I can come dice with you guys one of these days. Is this by chance? Yeah. Uh, Caden's mom piping in. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So, she says, "You hear that? Okay. Story of my life. <laughs> Story of my life. The son stealing the pit stealing bike. Stealing the pit bike. Yeah. Why you got to break your mom's stuff, dude? Going out there and getting all shreddy on it. Yeah, I, I actually have Nikki one test, and I'm gonna start building one that one. Um, but just uh, trying to. See how her bike is. I'm sure she wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what about your sister? Does she like uh, riding pit bikes too, or is she not old enough yet? Um, she rides them. It's just not her thing right now. She likes riding quads and stuff. So that's like something that she likes to do. Is she rides horses. Oh, right so, on. So, yeah. Dude, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Uh, hey, so I was going to ask you, Polaris did a like a little sponsorship thing where they like signed up two new drivers to be on the Polaris Razor race team. Um, I think both of those guys were your friends, weren't they? Yeah, Ethan Groom and Dallas from Dallas both got it in the from 1000. That's pretty sweet. Are you proud of them? Yeah, I'm super proud of them. Me and my friends actually have our own little uh, team for the iRacing short course thing that we do. And we, we take it pretty serious with each other. It's called Team Chalupa, named after his dog. <laughs> team and, Chalupa? Uh, nice. We have our little team. Yeah. That's awesome. So every time <laughs> we get all, we, our whole team ended up getting a podium this weekend, so we were all super stoked. Hey, do you know what a real Chalupa is, not a dog? Uh, I heard that, well, Brandon Sims thought that Chalupa, the Team Chalupa came from the Taco Bell. Yeah, because yeah. a Chalupa is a taco with a puffy tortilla. Yeah, that's what he thought it was. They were like, I didn't even notice that. Yep, that's so. I'm I'm like really loving the team name right now, dude. It's I awesome. I'm, I'm getting hungry now. Yep, right up my alley, dude. Uh, so you did really good this weekend. You got all that stuff. Did you have a good time talking with all your friends and hanging out? Did you get to see sponsors? Like maybe take us through a little bit of what you guys were doing when you weren't out on the track. Yeah, we had a ton of fun. We were, we went through tech. Tech was awesome. Um, we ended up, I ended up doing that thing. I wasn't sure if I should say it yet, but the thing that we did smarter than a third grader, I don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun, huh? So Caden and I went around and, uh, we did, are you smarter than a third grader with a few different drivers and, uh, industry people and Caden got to be the host and ask the questions and stuff. He came up with his own questions and everything. It was pretty awesome. Dude. Awesome. We got, uh, one of our loyal listeners, uh, and viewers, Tyrone Robinson's got a question for you, buddy. When you're not racing, what is your favorite thing to do? Um, when I'm not racing, steal oh, mom's pit bike. <laughs> I love going out to the desert. Nice. Definitely one of my favorite things to do. So I'm basically thinking that Caden just lives dirt life 24 seven. Sounds like it. Yep. That's pretty cool though, yeah, man. I, I, yeah, I'm always consistently driving either it's the sim simulator with the steering wheel and stuff, training, going to the desert, racing. It's it's always with the steering wheel. So when you're doodling in math class, like I did when I was your age, what are you drawing? Yeah. <laughs> Turbo S's. Turbo S's. Awesome. <laughs> oh, really? So you, that's like your next level? I, will, is it? I don't know why. It's just an addition. It, it, it's just something I do as a habit. I just, for some reason, I just draw Turbo S's. Nice. So like we used to always draw dirt bikes, so yep. you just draw Turbo S's? Exactly. That's Motor pretty rad. Tracks. So yeah. I, I think that you probably have a good sponsor being Polaris Razor since you like that so much, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I love Polaris Razor. I've been with them since, or I've been having Polaris since day one. I always had one. Had the 170 2014, I think. And I've just been driving ever since. 
do you remember some of those questions and some of the answers that we got for how you are you smarter than a third grader? Because, well, first of all, I feel yeah. like I feel like Jim Beaver is the best at that game ever because he like totally nailed every question. But some of those questions, like what was your funniest question that you thought like or funniest answer that you got, I guess? Um, I was pretty surprised that he got the, um, what was the biggest mammal, which was the whale. I, I think I know I that one. That was, I really didn't know that one either. Do you remember any of the questions on there? You can ask me and Casey one right now. Uh-oh. How's it going, Joey Showers? Uh, What's up, buddy? Uh, I remember. Don't make it hard. What? I'm not real smart. <laughs> <laughs> what country was Justin Bieber from? Oh, oh, I know boy. this one. You can't throw pop culture okay. at me, bro. I'm old. All right. I'll buzz in. George, Canada. <laughs> Is that true? I think Correct. so. Yes, yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Winning. Yeah, I got it. You Sweet, got the whole man. shot. So, um, we uh, should... I remember one more. Okay. I think I have to get a few more, but um, how many holes are in a golf course? Oh, Casey, uh, know this one. Casey. Yep. 18. Oh, okay. Casey, <laughs> Casey got that sure. one, man. He beat me on that one. What's yeah. the third one, the tiebreaker okay. for the win? Um, <laughs> Alfonso. Uh, oh, Siri's listening me. to us. Turn her off. You can turn her off. Just press a button. Do you remember what, what another one is so that we could get a tiebreaker for the win? Uh, I, uh, there was a few of them yeah, on there that were pretty good. Don't ask us the one like yeah. uh, there was one question that was, uh, "What are the seven dwarfs' names?" Dude, that took oh forever. My yeah, that was way too yeah. gnarly. I remember that, walking away and that you guys were still thinking like, "Yeah, that was the question." Was way too gnarly. He was over it. Yeah, so Caden just bailed out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know any of them. What's well, another one so we can do a tiebreaker for me and Casey, or you just want Casey and I to tie it up? <clears throat> What movie is Princess Fiona from? Crap, I don't know what this uh, one is. Oh, Casey. you know because the girls, huh? I do. And now uh, Shrek, right? That's the big green dude. Shrek. Yeah. Oh, you got it. <laughs> All right, good job, Case. Winner, winner. Yay. Casey's starting off the week winner, on a Monday winner. with a big win, dude. On the show, One, are you smarter than a third grader? Beat me. I think yeah, this that was is, definitely fun. It was fun hanging out with Mia, Warren, and Jim. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Really so I, I'm kind of feeling like uh, maybe Caden's got uh, a secondary option just in case this off-road thing, like he gets tired of it. He could be a, a, host a, Jeopardy. Talk, yeah, a <laughs> game show host. Yeah, so, exactly. Hey, we got to do it some more, though, because we didn't get to ask enough people. I know Sierra Romo, does like she's really scared of doing it, so we definitely need to get her on. So who could she battle with? Alfonso's yeah. laughing. He says George Sr. knew all the dwarves. Hey, yeah, he did. He that. knew them. <laughs> Who do you think Sierra could battle with? Her, her dad, Randy Romo. Okay, good. We're going to get the Romo. Okay, so schedule that, dude, because i got to drop off this RS1 uh, at Craig Scanlon's in like two weeks. So let's line that bad boy up, dude. We'll do an episode of Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader in Southern California. All right, let's do it. Sweet, man. All right, well, hey, we got Mike Gardner who's going to call in in a couple of minutes. So, um, first of all, you did awesome this weekend. Um, are there any fun Thank things you. other than the uh, the pit bike riding? Was there any other fun things that uh, you were able to do? Like, did you see some of your friends that you haven't seen in a while because racing came back? Uh, we, we all hung out. It was a good time. Uh, we ended up Dallas Gonzalez has a pro speed so we drove that around Boston the radios. And so that was fun. It's always a good time. That's pretty cool. Hey, we got one last question for you. Uh, Tyrone said, uh, do you have any Baja 1000s in your future? I, I think you do personally, but is that some goal that you would like to accomplish? It, it is a goal. In a, uh, hopefully in a couple of years, we'll be in desert. Dang, dude, that's going to be pretty cool. Baja 1000 is a big goal to have, man, so keep that on your bucket yeah, list. Yeah, it's a big goal. Yeah, sure. and, uh, yeah keep, it's on Keep doing good, though, man. You're doing good. All these little milestones that you keep achieving, man, you're doing really, really well. You doing good in school still? Yeah, I, I'm pretty positive right now. I have straight A's, so Ooh, try to keep it up. Look at you, bud. Straight well, A's, podiums. He's mopping up the third grader uh, reports or, yeah. or uh, contests. So. <laughs> dude, big time. All right, Caden. Well, uh, please tell your family that we said hello, and keep kicking butt, dude. You did awesome this weekend. All right. Congrats on that perseverance award. 
thanks, man. I just figured it out. Like, I didn't even know what was going on. And then I started, like, almost crying and losing it on the show. So I got to call Robert after the show. And my mom are like, it's, it's George. We know it. It's George. We know it. Awesome. I didn't get to watch any of the uh, Facebook stuff that, that was going on today because I was working so much. But, um that's cool. So I'm going to call Rob after the show. So that's cool, dude. Tell your family I said hello. All right. See ya. See Later. You Take care. Thanks. Man, that, thanks for letting letting us borrow him, Sarah. That was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. So thank you very much, Sarah. Yeah, so uh, it was cool to see Caden this weekend, too. Like, honestly, it was really neat to see him hosting that How Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader? Yeah. Um, because clearly he's way smarter than like any of us are. <laughs> yep. So wait, he was asking those questions, and I was like, "Shit, I'm glad I'm not a, 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 a contestant." <laughs> I'm not because, in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because and then it was kind of cool though, like what Alfonso said that my dad knew all the. Yeah, that's funny. Dwarfs. Like, where does this information come from, though? Like, how he, do people store these? He things? did have a daughter too. That's true. This is why I know could you uh, answer, Shrek. Could you answer the dwarves? I could do most of them probably. Really? Well, I know Grumpy. Sneezy. What's it? Oh, sneezy, sleepy, sleepy, grumpy. Is there like a smarty pants guy? <laughs> there should be. Yeah, I don't know. So, anyways, uh, it was really cool seeing Caden. I think we got Mike Gardner is going to call in just a little bit here, so hopefully uh, he remembers and uh, doesn't just <laughs> blow us off. But um, it really was cool to see everybody come back, man. Like, there was so many people walking around the pits and. I feel like we're doing a good job on the show, and I feel like, you know, people are, are into it. But when I went to the races and I could see people talking about it, and then I'd hear, like, our crew members say, hey, people notice the dirt life, or people notice that you were walking around or whatever, and people are excited. Like, it was really meaningful to see, not only because it's me, you know, they're happy that I'm back out at the races, but because they're paying attention to the stuff that we're doing as well. You know, they like hearing these conversations that we're having about off-roading or dirt bike riding or whatever it is. So it, it's pretty cool, man. Well, like, and, and they're part of it, I think, is a lot of it, right? Yeah, because everybody can join us yep, and hang out. They're part of that family, too. So I think it's got um, – that's one of the reasons why it's got its little special uh, – well, place. I'll put it that way. I guess it's kind of the same thing that we just talked about with Justin. Like, I learned so much because, you know, the track was an hour long or what, roughly an hour long. So that means before every lap, I had an hour to talk with all the people in the oh, pits. Yeah. So it felt like it was the conversing. same thing, right? Yep, like, yep. we're talking to all these people just like we were sitting in the pits at the races and learning new stuff and just having a good time. Right. Uh, one of the things that why we wait for Mike. Doc, to, that's one. Oh, Thanks. Doc. Yeah, Thanks, one of, John. <laughs> one of the things that I want to do a little bit more of, and I'd like to get some of our users' opinions on it um, while we're waiting for Mike Gardner, is I'd like to do a little bit more inspirational stuff, like see if we can do some segments with uh, uh, more like, I don't know, go-getting and motivation and stuff like that. I think it would be pretty cool. Well, we definitely need Robert for that one. Yeah, we could use Robert <laughs> Blanton for that one. For sure. uh, so it sounds like we got Mike on the line. What's up, Mike? How are you? Hello. Mike Gardner, can you hear us, bud? Yeah, I'm trying to add you to FaceTime here, and I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Yeah, I don't think you'll be able to. I think it's pretty much uh, FaceTime just uh, took a dump on us earlier. We are having issues with our uh, broadcasting software, and I think for whatever reason, uh, the host of the show needs to take some technical classes to be able to fix this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Maybe some more hours in the day. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's just do a uh, an audio interview if that's okay. Yeah, no worries, man. I like it. So, so how are uh, you guys doing today? Doing good. Good. We're, yourself? Yeah. How about you, man? Not too shabby. You you had an awesome weekend, that's for sure. I mean, all of us did. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty eventful and exciting, fun, crazy, all the above. And congratulations, George, on the uh, Perseverance Award, man. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. I just barely figured that out on the show. Like, I told the other couple of people that called in, I almost freaking lost it. Like, I feel like a little girl crying. She just broke up with her boyfriend. Like, <laughs> it's cool, though. I got to call Rob after this, though, and thank him. So it's pretty neat, and I got to get my emotions straight <laughs> before I go to bed tonight, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's it's pretty awesome, man. You definitely deserve it. I think uh, I think a lot of people in the community are pretty pumped for you, man. Yeah, thanks, man. I'll have to check out social media. I wish I could have checked out social media today. I was just working so much. But, uh, yeah, well, let's get back to um, what we were going to ask you about. So I had w the first question was, where the heck was your wife, dude? She wasn't at the races? No. So between 
our dog Buckwheat, my dad's two dogs. We couldn't really find anybody to watch the dogs, and she had to uh, stay back and do dog mom duty. Bummer. But she was, yeah, I guess she was on the live feed for my whole race and giving everybody updates. So she was, I called her weather girl. She was oh, playing yeah. weather man's <laughs> role, but for the, nice. for the gardener family. So she was back at, in, with a good internet connection since none of us had service out there. <laughs> exactly. So I guess she was like calling into my dad, like he's in this place. He's just far behind the leader. He's just far in front of third, you know, all that good stuff. So she was actually a very crucial part of the team, even though she was home. Yeah, that's pretty bitching, though. Cool. And obviously, have a support mechanism, too. So we've been talking about the support mechanisms pretty much this whole show with everybody. And one of the things that uh, I noticed that with your team, I was talking to your dad uh, while you were lining up to do your qualifying run on, what was it, Thursday, Wednesday, um, whenever it was. and uh, Thursday, yeah. You had got like creeped up on the starting line, and for whatever reason, the car didn't want to start. And the winner of the mm-hmm. of the desert class, Ryan Piplick, uh, or excuse me, uh, yes, the, um, he he actually went out and helped you fix your car. Yeah, and to be completely honest with you, if he didn't, I'm not sure I would have been able to qualify. Like, I'm pretty confident we would not have got the car started. I am forever grateful for him for doing that. He's a, uh, he's a pretty stand up guy, Ryan. Yeah. So when I saw that, so, I was like, I, cause I didn't know who was working on your car. I just saw your dad out there and I saw him bent over, like mess with the fuel pump or doing whatever he was doing. And then he came back over the fence. I was like, no way. Like, Holy cow. That's bitching. Like dude, racers helping racers. Yeah. yeah so cool. It's, it's what it's all about. And you know, what's cool about me and Piplick. <clears throat> so my first year pro first race, first year, uh, him and I got into each other on the track and he ended up flipping over and it, uh, you know, made him pretty upset, rightfully so. And we got in a pretty good argument afterward. And basically it's great to see, like, you know, you can get into a little altercation if you will, but at the end of the day, like he's still a racer. He still respects it. He clearly has respect for me and I have a bunch of respect for him. And he came up and helped us start. And like we, ever since the situation, him and I have been totally great the last four years since the day it happened. But it's really cool to see like the racers come together and do something like that. You know, like I, my hat goes off of that dude. And then he went and won. So I was so pumped for him. He, cool. that guy's a beast in a car. Dude, he really, he was wooded when we saw him. Like, he was just ripping. I can't believe, like, we were thinking that, like, when we saw him pass by, we're like, dude, when is he going to break? Because he's going way too fast. Like, he, but he held it together like a boss. He's an animal, man. You should be on the track on a works course with him. Like, I mean, I'm not, this is my first desert race, and I haven't had the uh, opportunity to race against him there. But on a works track, too, I mean. The dude is a savage in a car. It's unbelievable how well that guy can drive. Yeah, it's pretty bitching to see. And yeah, and that was my first time ever being in the pits and like kind of like being the desert guy too. So it was pretty neat to be able to see. Well, uh, let's get a little bit more into uh, into your weekend then. So um, the weekend actually started out good for me understanding how your program was working for two reasons because you and I both got the same opportunity to uh, drive an SMG Motorsports uh, vehicle because of Craig Scanlon so that was pretty cool yeah it uh, so basically I mean I could go into the whole how it all unfolded if you'd like to hear it yeah let's definitely but the second thing I wanted to say so we'll do do two things so you can talk about both of them is that both of us went to both of us went to the races with our fathers for the first time in a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Go figure, huh? We're both in a Scanlon ride, and we're both out there with our dad. That's the way to do it. Awesome. Yeah, so I thought both of those things were pretty cool. And then, obviously, I talked to your dad for a while, so it was just neat to have that all camaraderie thing. But, I mean, all of it turned out very, very sure. similar. Yeah, no, and it's – uh, when I saw you post about it, see, I was going – I went about my program completely different than you. I saw you doing all these race updates and are not race updates, sorry, but like project updates, you know, and I thought that was pretty cool. So you could follow along with the story of how you made it to the race. And when, when I did it, 
I was telling Craig and everybody, like, I'm not saying a word to anybody. <laughs> I'm just going to show up Shit, nice. like a week before, you know, on social media and just drop the ball on everybody. So it, uh, you know, it, it, it lasted a little bit, but you know, I had to talk to quite a few sponsors to get some support. So I think it leaked out a little bit and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not Kim Kardashian. I don't think anybody really gives a hell what I'm doing, but it, uh, yeah, I, I, it was funny. The two, we both got the same opportunity and went about it in two different fashions. And I honestly, I really liked what you did. I thought it was fun following around or following along the project. Well, I kind of wanted to follow yours, but when I saw the end, end result and the gra- the rap and stuff, dude, you killed it too, though, man. It was pretty awesome. And the, there's one, there's one more <laughs> thing you. that's uh that's a culmination of all these things. Like, so those two things happened, and I wanted to to bring up those two things before I brought up this last subject, um, because we still want to talk about your race, but. You and I both got an opportunity from Craig Scanlon, and those opportunities didn't come because we planned them or anything like that. We kind of just fell in our in both of our laps. And if anybody yeah. that's listening to the show doesn't know what fell into the laps last year was Mike lending his razor to Brett Carpenter, who saved my life on course. And so all of these yeah. things come together, and then Craig pays back both of us. It's like, it, it, you know, like those – the I don't know what you ought to call it. Like, it doesn't matter if you believe in destiny, fate, or anything like that. These things happen for a reason. It was freaking, like, it was so cool for me to see Mike sitting there on the course knowing all this stuff and then seeing how awesome it was to talk to his dad for the first time and how much his dad cared about him, how much my dad and my family was supporting me. All of it, to me, was just, like, warming my heart up all weekend. It was awesome. For sure. I'll bet. Yeah, and... You know, you can take it even a step further. Something else we have in common. We both had raced the championship. I, did, had you raced it before that? Or was that your first year racing it in 2000? When was that? Last year, 19? Yeah, I've actually raced every single year. Oh, okay. So I you, just you have, have to excuse I my memory. No, nah, no worries. You flipped over a couple times. I'll excuse it. <laughs> <laughs> a couple. But yeah, I was going to say that the last time you raced the championship and then in 16 was the last time I raced, both of us crashed out and weren't able to finish the race. So that was another kind of coincidence that you and I have. Yeah. It's just crazy. So like, and all these things, like the main moral of the story or the point of the story was that it warmed my heart when I saw you on the track, when I was talking with your dad, like so many of these things that people don't really get to understand because they go to the races and it's just win, 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 go, 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 um, strategy, strategy, strategy. But there's so much depth to every single team that's out there. Your wife sitting at home, still supporting you, your dad taking the time to get off work, to be able to build the car with you. Like all of these things that come together are so meaningful to every person out there. Now you nail on the head, man. And, and I appreciate the kind words getting, you know, getting the, the warm feeling, seeing me on the track. Cause it, I feel the same way with you, like for you to bounce back in a year and be out there doing the race that potentially could have killed you. I mean, that's a huge thing. And it was crazy. So my dad went up and talked to Brian from rigid, which is who you were standing next to. And I'm in the car sweating my ass off and can't really function. And dad comes up to me and he goes, yeah, I was just chatting with Brian. I had to go. Did you see who was next to him? He goes, who? I go, that's George. And he's like, from the world championship. And I said, yes. And he goes, Holy crap. I need to go say hi to him. I'm like, go. And like, he was just excited, just as excited to say hi to you. That's you know, cool. because he obviously knows, he knows your story. He, you know, he didn't technically own Danielle's car, but he's the one who's always prepped and maintained Danielle's car. So like in a roundabout way, our whole family was involved in, you know, your tragic incident. And, you know, my my dad's a very caring guy. Him seeing you, I think it made him a little emotional. Dude, so they, it was uh, 
it's, I, like how all these cool dots we're con- all out there yeah 100 percent. yeah how all these dots connect is just phenomenal right super cool all right so um yeah. the, ro- the room's getting a little heavy but i love you for all that stuff so let's start <laughs> talking about your race so the uh the qualifying you kind of told me on a text message like how you did in qualifying but maybe take our audience through it a little bit because it wasn't just go like you missed your qualifying position you had to wait um, a couple minutes and they gave you a five minute uh window to be able to still start qualifying so you guys were under some duress before you got the car going. Yeah. So, you know, to start it off, we were, I think we were waiting in line in a hundred degree weather for about three hours to qualify, maybe two, two and a half. Ouch. All I know is I was sweating like nonstop and car dies one time and dad rolls over the four seater. We jump start the thing, you know, inch forward, inch forward. They're letting people go, letting people go. And then we're literally the second people on the line. We have one person ahead of us that's getting ready to qualify. And then it's my co-driver, TJ, and myself ready to rip. I hit the gas to scoot up and the freaking car dies. Oh, no. And I'm just like, dude, we've been sitting here for this long in this damn heat. And this is going on. So I couldn't believe it. And I'm like getting back to the spiritual thing and destiny and all that. <laughs> I overthink things like this. Yeah. Like I what think, the hell what is God trying to tell me right now? <laughs> like I'm already questioning if I'm making the right choice being at a race again, <laughs> but then, you know, like weird little things happen. I play mind tricks on myself. So, so then dad's trying that we're trying to figure it out. And Pip like hops over the fence and he's telling me, do this, do that, do this at the same time. Ready, go. And then it starts turning over. I'm like, holy crap, dude. He's like a mad scientist. Yeah, I so thought the same we thing. Were, I was watching it. I was like, dude, how, like, where did this come from? Yeah, I mean, the guy is smarter than hell. I can give him that. He, uh, And then he, we kept trying and kept trying. And then, boom, it fired. Well, sorry, I skipped the part where the, you know, 10 people passed me when we're trying to start the car. Yeah, because you, you had they to all stage went. late. Now, yeah, so now we are literally the last people in line. And the flagger comes up and goes, I will give you five minutes. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, just add the pressure. I could use some more sweat. <laughs> yeah. so, Start the clock. <laughs> yeah, so we go, go, go. And it probably took three minutes once, like, once the last person had gone and we had been working on it for probably 15 minutes up to that point. And it freaking fired, and I'm like, holy hell. And I I told TJ, at least I thought I told TJ, I go, hold on, because this is going to get wild. (laughs) Because I'm not not effing around right here. So they freaking waved the green flag, and I took off like a bat out of hell. And I drove that car so damn hard and into corners so damn hard. But obviously there's those crests and those hills and crap that I don't know what's behind. What's, excuse me, I burped. Excuse me again. <laughs> Perfect. Um, sorry about that. You're good. <laughs> so, so no, but, but you know, we did a site lap three hours ago, but that was useless. I might as well have done the site lap six years ago. <laughs> so we just flying up, flying by the seat of our pants, and we put down a pretty bitch and run, I thought. But apparently I read results, and they were, said third place, and then, Hours later, we got an email at like nine saying we qualified six out of the 22. And I was like, well, you know, six ain't that bad. No, dude, so, that, especially after not having any seat time for a long, so many years. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate that. It, it That's kind of what D was saying, Danielle was saying to me. He's like, dude, you haven't raced a car in years. And I'm like, I don't care. You know, I, I came out here to have fun, but. If I'm going for it, I'm still going for it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure you were the same way when you race. It's like you, that competitive edge is still there. Yeah, I was a little bit more timid. Like, I didn't go as crazy as you. Like, I was a little bit more timid during the race because um, I was skeptical on how my body would react or perform, I guess you could say. But uh, I noticed that I uh-huh. did the same kind of things, the same mentality kicked in after the race. I was looking at lap times, and I was like, shit, if I didn't get lost, if I didn't get a flat, like, if I didn't do this, like, I, where would I have been? Like, same kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. For sure, you're a racer. <laughs> you know, I totally get you being timid, though. I mean, coming back from something like that, that's that's a, that's a big step you took. So you just went out there and I, and got, like, six isn't bad, though, dude. Like, how far were you off the leaders? 
Um, I think three seconds. Don't quote me on that because I'd hate to be wrong, and I'm sure I am. It was but still, I dude, that's pretty it, good. It was only a few seconds. But, I mean, and let's be honest, like, how hard I thought I was driving, I was like, dude, I got to be in the top three because I was driving the shit out of Craig's car. <laughs> <laughs> but, Drive it like you bought it. Again, there's those, <laughs> yeah, right? There's those, uh, there's those crests and hills and stuff that obviously I didn't remember was behind them, so I had to break. I don't know. If I got a few more qualifying laps, I probably would have done better. But, hey, it is what it is. I still had a damn good time. Yeah, for sure. So, um, well, now that you mention it, driving the crap out of Craig's car. So, did you anything happen to Craig's car when you guys raced? Like, are you giving it back to him in the same condition you borrowed it from? <laughs> did you have to sign a uh, rental no. agreement? <laughs> get the insurance? Yeah, well, the- <laughs> we... We have a little bit of work to do on it. That's for sure. Yeah, um, so I gotta, I gotta clean this bad boy up too. I messaged, made sure I messaged him. We lost the fender. Uh, we got all flat tires now, so we're giving them away to some of our listeners. <laughs> and uh, somehow, I have no idea how it happened. We, uh, we mounted the antenna on the roof. I didn't roll over, but the antenna uh-huh. got bent backwards towards the hood. <laughs> so that's, that's another thing. Yeah. So I was just wondering what happened to your guys' rig. Well, on the fifth lap, we were five or six miles to the finish. And, and it was I a five-lap race, right? the boulder. Yeah, five-lap race. We're on the fifth lap. And we're on like the 20, between the 23rd and 24th mile. So we were almost done with the lap. And 27.9 miles. Lost spoke. No, no, nice. 29.7. Yeah, me. is that what it was? 29, yeah. And I just freaking smoked the wall like a rock wall or a boulder. Excuse me, I burped again. Um, but immediately it's like, it's like, oh shit, what just happened? And then, oh shit, I got a flat. And then, oh, I think I got more in the flat going on. Crap. And I pushed it. Well, I take that. Yeah, take I take that back. It was, uh, that happened at like mile 20. And we stopped at mile 23 and a half. So, Dad looks out the window and he goes, yeah, the race is done. The tire was like flat on the ground sideways. <laughs> oh, no. I was pushing the thing around like a ski sled. Plow on the field. But, yeah, exactly. So we just parked it right there. And I think that was like 7.10 at night. And we had a little camping sesh out in the desert for a few hours until they came and got us. Yeah, and then but like but beforehand though, like you had uh, a different co-driver start, and I think uh, the co-driver wanted either wanted to get out or your dad wanted to get in. Like, what was the? Because you guys were ripping at the beginning. So yeah, we, as you know, the track was brutal as hell. So we uh, lap one, it was bad. Lap two, it was worse. Lap three was pretty brutal, and my co-driver TJ. He, uh, about halfway through the third lap, he started hurting pretty bad. <laughs> he, he was having some back issues, all kinds of issues. And he goes, he goes, dude, I, I think I want to radio your dad to suit up and, uh, hop in the car. I'm like, Hey man, whatever you want to do. And then of course, like moments later, my dad radios, like, just so you guys know, you're only a minute and a half off the leader in second place. Uh, you're a minute and a half in front of third, like you got this. And now TJ's over there freaking stressing himself out, playing some mind games like crap. What if I make him get out or what if I make him pull in so I can get out and he loses and I go, dude, we did not come here to win. We came here to have fun. I don't give a hell. If you need to get out, get out. My dad will get in. And honestly, my dad would love to get in. Yeah. He'd be involved. So, yeah. So we decided, and as we come over that hill that had, you know, the little uh, finish line thing that we were jumping, yeah, that little crest, dropped down in the pits, and TJ unhooks his helmet, and they freaking Ronnie Anderson, Cole Keats, and all JD Marsh's crew, we were all pitting together, and they they freaking picked up uh, TJ out of the car and set him down. He couldn't even stand up; they had to hold him up. Dang, he so was, he was he, he was, was, beat. was hurting. Yeah, but he would. That means he was pushing it, like he was <laughs> yeah. going for the win. Yeah. That's cool. He, he was beat up pretty bad. The poor guy felt really, really bad. And he's like, 
the thing about him, dude, he's he's a beast. Like he's not gonna do anything. He's not gonna give up at anything, especially because he will hate to get ridiculed for it. So for him to actually pull over and get out of the car, knowing that Craig's gonna give him shit, knowing that my dad's gonna give him shit, knowing that Mitch Guthrie Senior is gonna give him shit, <laughs> and he he still got out. So he, I know he had to have been hurting really really badly. But yeah, so, but your dad yeah. got it. Your dad got in. You guys had a pretty good time until you, uh, well, you smoked that rock. Yeah. So we, dad hops in, we strap him down and he's 60 years old. So I go, dad, the first mile, you know, first three, four, five miles, they're really effed up. So get ready. And I don't plan on going slow. So we, <laughs> we were hitting the chatter bumps and I could hear him over there going, <laughs> like, <laughs> cause the bumps were like squeezing the life out of them. And I go, are you all right? And he just gives a thumbs up because this is awesome. This yeah, is awesome. <laughs> sweet. So, um, so I have I have to look through the ahead. footage, but I think I have most of the stuff that you described on uh, on GoPro. Oh, really? I was standing in the as pits. As far as like all the chatter bumps and stuff. No, not the ch- chatter bumps. In the pits, all the uh, uh, TJ getting out, your dad getting in, rooting you guys on. No way. Yeah, I'm pretty you sure. Really? I'm pretty sure. I'll look at it. Cause I sat there and That's filmed awesome. you. I sat there and filmed you guys the whole time. I even gave you a fist bump. You were just too focused. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Super focused. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't oh, see man, still from all the dust in his corneas. <laughs> yeah, you had too much dust yeah, in your no face. Still. <laughs> I'm still coughing because of that freaking weekend. Dude, it was pretty nice. Hey, but, so uh, we just had a question come in, and honestly, I don't know if it's for me or you, but it, it'll match both of us. So um, Tyrone Robinson says, has this lit a fire for you to race competitively again? My answer is is yes, I like racing competitively and stuff like that, but uh, I'm just going to go out and support everybody. I'm having a good time being uh, part of the uh, side-by-side industry. So that's my answer. Absolutely. What about you? Um, my ans- My answer would be, um, occasionally I will not, I, I don't think I have it in me to dive deep like we had for that, you know, five year stamp that we really got after it racing. You were getting after it pretty but, hard uh, too. Yeah, we were full on into it, man. Like it was great, but it's, as you know, man, it's a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah. And, uh, 100%. Maybe if Craig gives us the opportunity you know, to do one race a year, yeah. <laughs> we'll both do that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, I'm kind of on that same page. <laughs> like it was, uh, we have to get like a 4WP SMG half retired contract going on. Perfect. Oh, one old, race a year. Old guy vintage class racing 4WP sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but I mean, it. it's funny because how brutal the track was. The next day driving home, we were already talking like, okay, what are we going to do? Because, I mean, not like, let's go buy a car ra- car and race, but it's like, I ha- I now have a little bit of a hankering to be competitive. So, we, uh, I don't, George, I do not like the fact that I've raced the world championship twice and crashed out twice. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of that. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, next time you're going to have to bring it home. Uh, I don't disagree with all those statements, though, because we had the same kind of uh, gut feelings and stuff. Like, I guess it's just that natural racer in us. And even with our dads and stuff, like we, my dad and I were driving home, and uh, I didn't even bring it up. But he was like, well, what's what do you want to do next? And I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, let's slow down. Like, let's yeah. pull the reins back here a little bit before we, uh, before yeah, we do sounds, this. He I, sounds like my dad. I just thought of the name of your guys' um, part-time teams what? right it'll be uh scanlon's angels <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice ring to it yeah doesn't it that would be pretty funny <laughs> um yeah so it was cool though that uh that you guys had such a good time man and honestly it was it was just cool that craig gave us both the opportunity to do that like you you know i i finished the race and i had a great time i didn't win or anything i think we got a top 10 or something you were obviously hauling the mail and having a great time with uh with you know your dad and tj and stuff and obviously danielle even had a good time and she wasn't even there so like all of that is Absolutely. so meaningful man like when you went to work today how did it feel were you just like yes like how much fun was this weekend it, you know it it's funny because i work with my dad and 
we're literally sitting in a truck next to each other for like eight to 10 hours a day. And most of the discussion today revolved around racing. He, in a perfect world for him, he'd buy Bradbury's desert car and we'd race every race from this weekend on. Oh, if I it was you. up to him, that's what we would do. And I have to, like you said, I have to pull his reins back home and be like, nah, you have to calm down. D and I are trying to have a kid, kind of. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on that point, in that point of life where it's like, you know, every now and then if we can make it to a race, sure. But we got to we gotta focus on <clears throat> business and family and you know how it is. Life, dude. It's yep. called life, yeah. But, life. But, but we can still live exactly. our dirt lives too. So um, Tyrone calls us a, calls it a legends class. Yeah. So Tyrone's calling it the legends class. I like that name. <laughs> it's a legends class. Yeah. I love that. That's a good ring. So we'll t- we'll tell Craig we'll part be part of his legends class. Has- uh, hashtag SMG Angels. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so um, all right, man. Well, like I said, dude, it was really cool seeing you back out there. Obviously, there were so many dots that connected that just uh, made it meaningful for everyone that was there. I just thought it was super cool for everybody to be there like when i left the the track i kind of felt well here put it this way we went back home to the airbnb that we had we i had an 18 hour day on saturday filming and doing all that stuff took a three hour shower no we we actually we (laughs) actually went back we get we had something to eat and we just rested right and then so the next day we got going and for the previous six days we had gone from the airbnb to the track and when we passed by the track like to go back it to was Arizona. Like wrong. What's I, wrong? Yeah, I was like sad. I was what like, happened? oh man, like what? The, I can't see her because like I felt like I was leaving all my friends and family like yep. behind. You know what I mean? Right. So and then I got stoked on the show and like it was just cool, man. Like those emotions are so meaningful. And I know that you and your dad driving around the truck just felt the same way today. Absolutely, and you know it's crazy. The same thing for you happens. I'm sure it's like you've been out of there, out of the racing you know, we'll call it the racetrack for a year, me a couple years. And when you're in it, it's like all your people, your race family, your friends, like, it's like you never skip the beat. You're shaking hands, you're giving hugs. How you been? What's new? Like to me, it, it, like I used to always say the works races were so much fun. And it wasn't because of the 45 minute race that we did in the weekend. It was because of everything outside of the race. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Like the camaraderie. You just, just mingling with everybody, catching up, having a beer. Like it's, uh, that, that I do miss that a lot. Like I love running into Brett Carpenter. He, I saw him there. He's wearing his bandana or his mask. And I gave him a bear hug, dude. Like, yep. I don't get to see him all the time. I consider him a great friend, but I don't get to see Brett that often. And I did. He's one of my boys. Like you've seen him and, I don't know. Seeing everybody, Lauren that used to work at Muzzy's, like yep. it, it's it's really good. It's good being back in that scene and you know catching out with people. So I love I, it. I think we played. Uh, Caden played. Are you smarter than a third grader with Jim Beaver and that Lauren dude? Because I didn't know who Lauren was. It was I, what company is he with now? I forgot what the name of it was. Do you know? I don't know so who I, he, he's, he's with now. He kind of he kind of looks like uh, Rob Muzzy a little bit. No, a little taller. Yes, he's yeah. got a little bit of that stash. So going they played on. they and I don't know Lauren, and I'm not bashing on him, but he was horrible at the game. Dude. <laughs> he was terrible. So you have to give him some shit because Jim put a beating yeah. on him. And how are you smarter than a third grader? <laughs> <laughs> really? Y'all, dude, it uh, was Lauren's bad. Lauren's such a good dude too. He was probably having a blast doing it. Oh, he was, but the questions that Caden that was asking him. Oh man, Jim tore him up. <laughs> was he asking some hard questions? I yeah. Played- I played Are You Smarter than a Fifth Grader with Craig's kid, and he whooped my ass. These questions were significantly hard. Like, uh, who are the seven dwarfs? Uh, like, all kinds of hard yeah, stuff, I dude. Can, Where, yeah, what country, did Just, what country did Justin Bieber originate from? Like, <laughs> dude. Well, that's Canada. Yeah. Well, see, see, you're already ahead of right there. Yep. Uh, so, all right, man. Well, we got to wind down the show a little bit here because we've been on for two hours. But, man, it was good seeing you this weekend. I'm so glad that you had a smile on your face when you left, even facing that adversity. It's killer to see you back out there. Thanks, brother. And same to you, man. It's good to see you back out there. And I have a feeling that we're both going to get out there again soon. Yeah, I'm sure we will. And even before that, I got to come to California and uh, drop off this uh, RS1 back to Craig. So maybe we can go grab some food. Tacos. Hmm. You tell me when. 
All right, homie. It'll be in the next couple I'm weeks. I'm literally about 20, 25 minutes from Craig's house. So right on, you man. Let me know when you're in town. Sounds good. You better know a good taco shop, then we can dial it in. Oh, dude, we got a great place by us called, called El Ranchito. They have the goods and a great margarita, too, if you like margaritas. Sweet, dude. Sounds good to me, Mike. Well, I appreciate it, man. And please tell the wife we said hi and uh, my new friend, Brian uh, Gardner, as well. Will do, man. Good chatting with you guys. You too, bud. See ya. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. So, speaking of angels, Jeff Angel says Vicky says hi. Yeah, so and he said he had a good time this weekend. Yep. He, he said the same thing that we said at the beginning yeah. of the show. Like, Did I anybody was, else have a helicopter follow? Nope. I was <laughs> felt like such a superstar having those guys, uh, those helico- the helicopter follow me around. So um, Alfonso, my media guy, is going to call in in just a bit here so we can talk to him and wind down the show. Um, we'll kind of go through um, a little bit of the stuff that, that I did um, during yeah. the race and just have a good time with the, the show, man. It was It was crazy to see, like, I don't I don't know how to like put into words. I've said it what 10 times on the show how awesome it was to see everybody and how emotional I was all weekend because I was so happy. It was just badass, man. Like I couldn't believe how much fun we were all having standing in the dirt. Like it was so cool. So and then, well so let me interject. So then to so all that emotion, right? And all the people and all the community coming together and then, you know, you had a great time and then it's all over. And then the whole industry as a whole comes back and says, Hey, with Robert, you're the, uh, you're the man. That's probably cool why I that? started like almost, cool. I'm so still cool. like, I got, we got to like, I got to wait till you I need talk a to minute. Rob. Yeah, I'm you need a minute. Up, I'm, I'm sure that's awesome. Alfonso, what's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you guys? Dude, we're doing, doing good. good, man. This uh, this show's been a little bit different than the normal shows. We haven't had a featured guest. We've just been talking about racing, and then obviously uh, I got uh, a little uh, broken down already on the show, but it's cool, man. Nice it's surprise. Been, yeah, nice surprise. It's been pretty neat. Um, so we were supposed to talk about at the beginning of the show, kind of break down uh, our race weekend a little bit, but uh, so for anybody that doesn't know who Alfonso is, he's done uh, a lot of media stuff for The Dirt Life. He's uh, done some of the filming for the Honda Off-Road stuff, and uh, we did a shop tour with those guys. He's helped uh, at the races, obviously, at the UTV World Championship, and he's been a big supporter of the show. So it's cool to, um, you know, have that dirt life uh, camaraderie and stuff. What do you think about going to the UTV World Championships, bud? Man, it was so intense, but at the same time, it was really cool to see <clears throat> everyone in the industry just rally around you, man. Like, I know you broke down earlier, but, man, it was really cool to get an inside perspective of just the industry rallying around a great guy like you. Well, thanks, man. And just to get an inside perspective of the industry in general, right? Because, like, you go out to the desert and you do a whole bunch of stuff. Like, you spend your life in the dirt all the time. But what do you think about just being at the racetrack? It, it was pretty intense, man. It, it just, like, seeing all the parents getting their uh, kids' cars ready and just seeing, like, when something goes wrong, how fast everyone rallies around and just gets the car dialed if they can and get it back out on the race course. Yeah, what so about like the intensity? Uh, yeah. Okay. What about the intensity of like the drivers and the pit crew and stuff like that? Did you get to see most of that stuff too? <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely. And uh <clears throat> when uh shock therapy owner called earlier, sorry, I'm fanboying uh but when he called earlier and just was uh talking about how race day he just stays focused, uh yeah. definitely if I'm ever racing against that guy, I do not want to be on any other team besides <laughs> Justin. his. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want Justin chasing you, right? So he he actually no. him and his him and his team did a good job. I didn't see any of the guys that were uh, in the pits during my race, obviously because I was out there. But was there a lot of intensity there too? Um, your pits. We were more just checking in and making sure everything was going right. Uh, we were just excited to have you back out on the race course and. Uh, trying to keep you focused on uh, winning at life and uh, making sure you were making po- positive po- progress. Yeah, and positive decisions instead of weird weird ones. So, um, yeah, I guess we could kind of go into that and get your opinion on some of the stuff. Like, So, basically, my race started off, like our game plan was just to wait, let everybody go. It was going to be super dusty, super rocky. Like, 
I didn't want to have to get out and change a tire. I didn't want to have to do all these crazy things. So I was just going to go about it uh, with uh, a relaxed pace, a relaxed environment, right? Just finish, so, right? That was yeah, probably was in your mind. Just to finish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, we, if we could uh, do good, then we would do good. But finishing was the main goal. Right. And the track was so gnarly that it was hard to finish yeah, anyways. absolutely. So we went out there, and then so I stayed back, and I uh, let everybody go. And the first, like – eight miles, nine miles, I couldn't see anything. Like, I had the microfiber in my uh, hand, and I was, wipe, like, windshield wiper wiping. Like, I didn't even grab the steering wheel. I was wiping so much. Um, and I couldn't see anything. And I got passed by a couple dudes, and then Justin from Shock Therapy actually caught up in the helicopter and found out where we were. And then so he started following me around. And uh, Did he blow and- the dust away for you? I wish <laughs> that would have been super cool, but uh, it kind of gave me that whole little like happy feeling, right? Because I was stressing out so hard. I'm like, dude, if this is the way the whole race is gonna go, I'm just dipping out. Like, yeah, right. this is like not fun. It's too dusty. Right. And then so like when that happened, it was like that little edge that I needed. Does it almost feel like um, an- another partner was like, hey, I got your back? Is that kind of what yeah, it felt like? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe sounds, that's what it was. It, like, I could totally get that feeling. That sounds awesome. It just gave me that happy feeling, and I was like, yeah. okay, well, maybe it is time to show like to step up a little bit and like to start reacting to the terrain and doing these things and um so i started moving up a little bit and like push putting a little bit more effort into it um i passed a few people and then like right as i passed those people and it's been about maybe a couple miles since i saw justin finally i got clear track and i could see for like a little bit in front of me and i was like oh my god this is yeah i'm going like this is it like i can i can handle this and so I started going, and then I started feeling how good the car was working, and I was, like, driving pretty good. Um, my vision still isn't there. Like, I can't react as quick as I was, and my brain doesn't think as quickly as it used to and stuff like that. But I was making good decisions. Like, I was driving better than, say, I don't know, a normal person would get into a race car, couldn't drive that good. And I'm not saying that because a normal person can't drive good, but I felt good. Like, I, I want to compare it to – me not being a good race car driver anymore, but better than a normal person. Like, that's how I felt, like, in the middle. And so I was thinking, all right, well, if I can do this, like, and I'm seeing a little bit of this dust, like, if it's clear, I'll try. And so I started going a little bit. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, and I, th- I think I was telling you guys on the radio, like, I'm passing this mile marker and I feel pretty decent or whatever. Like, so could you hear the communications in the pits? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, <clears throat> where we were, we weren't in the pits. We were up on the finish line, uh, me and uh, Brian Forster. And uh, he would call every couple minutes to your dad to see what the updates were. That way we, because we only had the two radios. But um, once uh, once the shock therapy guy started chasing you in the helicopter, we could tell exactly where you were the whole time. <laughs> oh, so if I was moving or whatever? Yeah, you no. You see the helicopter? Like, so everyone it, knew where you were at that point. How cool is that? That is pretty cool. It really is. It felt I didn't know that until. Well, uh, if you think about it, it was almost like, like I'm, pu- I'm building, I wasn't there. Right. And I don't know too much about it. So I'm kind of like uh, constructing this visual in yeah. my brain. And all of a sudden I'm now seeing this whole industry. Who's like pumped that you're out on the track. Right. And check this out. There's like an exclamation point of you driving around. Oh, like a Sims exclamation. How cool is that? Like, that's what it felt like. Yeah, I'm pumped. It sounds super cool. And yeah. And then so I kept going and I could see that like the the bumps and like a lot of the stuff. I mean, the the car was amazing. The suspension was amazing. But just even the, the rough track and the dust and stuff, it was still messing with me, though. Like, sure. It's one of those things, like, you don't know until you know. Like, you don't know what your body can handle until you put it through that. I hate that statement, but it's so true. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know until you know. And during the time, like, I was like, oof, this might not go too good. Like, I got to keep pushing, and I'm not going to stop, but this might, like, I might have some issues. But we're just going to have to push through it and see. Because if I don't, then I'm going to feel like an idiot. Right. So, I just keep going. and, and 100%. Yeah, was, so and I think I may have said that a couple times on the radio, but anyway, so I'm going down the washes and stuff, and so I'm taking my time though because I'm like, okay, I got to keep my composure. So I would ri- lift up my uh, my visor on the helmet. I would take deep breaths. I would like shake my arms out. I would kind of like move my head around to try to stretch my neck a little bit with the neck brace on and stuff. But um, so I was trying to maintain my composure, and I freaking get lost. 
Oh, no. Yeah, so I miss a... a like off course, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it was down a wrong way area, too. So, like, one of the guys before us must have blown out the course markers. Got so, it. and the main line led off somewhere else. And then so I get lost, and then I see a dude coming towards me, so that means he's lost. And then so I see, like, I turn around to go back to find the track, and then four or five other dudes join in and they're lost. Oh, no. So there's all these idiots, including myself, driving around <laughs> in the middle of the desert, no, oh, no. no idea where to go, and there's other guys coming still. So now there's, like, probably ten dudes or something that were all cruising around in the desert, no idea where to go. And then finally I'm able to get, like – uh, like I go all the way back like a mile and then I go straight and I just go super slow and I finally figure out where to go. And, uh, they, at, by the time this was done, it was eight minutes or nine minutes. Like I was gone for a long time and then everybody follows behind me and we all get going. But the good part about it was that since I found it first, I dusted all the people out. Yeah, behind me. So nice. I, got, I gave them dust smoke screen. So then I called in and talked to, you know, a, Alfonso, Brian, my dad, and Brian Forrester, and said, okay, I'm going back again. So that was pretty cool. What were you guys like, oh, he's on the course again? Well, so Forrester called your dad and was like, hey, so, like, what's going on? Like, we haven't heard any updates. He's like, oh, he's lost. And we're like, oh, no. Like, how do you get lost with a race course? And then uh, a couple minutes later, about 10 minutes, like you're saying, we got word that you're back on course. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, He's pointed in the right direction. Let's keep this. Uh, let's keep this train rolling. Yeah. So I I thought the same thing too. I'm like, all right, I got to get going now. So imagine this one, April. Um, where where up is where up is? Sorry if I butchered the name. She said my daughter got my daughter got lost too. My husband and I were nervous wrecks. She's only 13. Yeah. See. Uh, that so would just kill you. Yeah. Well, I was a nervous. Wreck. I had no idea where I was going either. Right. So it's I could just, only imagine. Yeah, being 13 and. Ugh. So anyway, so I got going again and I was like, all right, I'm just going to go. Like, I'll see how it goes. And so my pace was actually pretty decent. Like we were clicking off miles and like going pretty good. Um, and then uh, we came around and uh, come around for the first lap and I'm coming through the pits and like the, the pits are like a straight line and then you hang a right and then you pass another section of the pits. So it's like an L kind of, but you get to see everybody. So the first time I go through the pits, I see all these people come out to the edge of the track and they're cheering me on. Nice. Like, so that was like another like motivator. We're here for you. Yeah. How like cool cheerleaders. That? Right. So yeah. I was like, yes, this is so cool. Awesome. Like I want to kind of turn around and do it again. Like I was like, <laughs> okay, this is sweet. We'll just do that all day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself like, shit, I wish we had three or four laps. Cause I, yeah. I'm, I'm really getting into this. Like this support is awesome. Nice. Uh, but anyway, so I take off back out in the desert and finally like this lap I can see. Like, I can see all the course. like Good. And uh, so I go, like, the first, I don't know, 10 miles or whatever. And no, seven miles. So, yeah, and then I smoke a rock that was in one of the ruts, and that blew out my front left tire. Oh, no. Yeah, so it slowly went down. I, so I guess it wasn't a full blowout, but it slowly went down. It took about a mile for it to go down and lose all its air. Um but I still had the helicopter following me, so I was like, dude, I can't stop. I got to keep going. Like, this is, like, it doesn't matter if I have a flat. I'm going to ride this wheel until it freaking breaks off. Like, I'm going. And Did you see your detour, Mark, the second time? Yeah. I, well, it turned into a good line because all okay. those dudes followed me through it. So, <laughs> okay. like, you could see it now. Nice, nice. Um, but I still don't think that was the race line. I still think at some point the race course was in a different position. So... I don't know where it where it went, but whatever the ra the race line that I took the second lap, it was still longer than whatever it was, but it it worked. So um, it ended up finding it's the all trail. That matters. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know, but anyways, it it worked out. I mean, by that time I'm already like down like eight ten minutes or something, so it, I blew it anyways. So um, I get then I get the flat tire and I'm like, all right, I got to keep going, and then so. I just start changing like the racer mentality kicks in again and I start thinking to myself, okay, well, this suspension's soft enough that if I give it gas and manage the throttle, I can like, lift the front end up a little bit like you would on your dirt bike. Like mm -hmm. you would lean back and, and manage a front tire. Right, right. So I start doing that. There's some corners I can't. Like it's just leaning too hard to the sure. – when you turn right, it's leaning too hard on the left front. Right. So it's just grabbing the whole wheel and tire and that's it. But everywhere else on the track, like, I can do it. Like, I can manage it pretty good. And so I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'll just keep going. Like, I'll just run it till the wheels fall off, literally. <laughs> and the tire lasted the whole race. 
and didn't break a wheel or anything. And I pushed it almost race pace. Like my lap time was almost as fast as the leader's lap time with a flat tire. Nice. So, and that lap, I was having all kinds of issues with my head and my body and stuff. Like I was like, my vision started changing and like, all I did was just try to manage it. I lifted up my visor again. I took deep breaths. I like really like shook shook myself out. Like I did everything I could to stay focused and on uh, on task, and it worked out. Like I at the end of the race, like the last couple of miles, I was thinking to myself, like, dude, I'm bringing this home. Like the, awesome. even if I gotta ride this tire in or or ride it in on a on a spindle, like I can still do it. Yeah. Like I only got a mile left. Right. Nice. Nice. So, um, and then Alfonso, I think he knows what happens next, but I, I'm going through and the helicopters, you know, showing like the end of the race or whatever. And I radio in, I'm like, dude, we're making it. We're going to make it. Like, this is so awesome. <laughs> nice. And right as I said that, like, I think Brian might've replied back like, yeah, you're doing it. Good job. You only have another mile to go. I freaking lost it. Like I couldn't hold it anymore. Like whatever is inside me, all my emotions were like, no. Nope dude, this is it. Like we're coming out. So I just started bawling like crying. Are you sure it wasn't just to get the dust out of your eyes? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> exactly. So I just had too much dust <laughs> washing it out. Um, and Justin was saying that awesome. same thing. He heard that emotion and stuff on the radio. Like I didn't really even like, it was like, I don't know. It was like, I was looking at it from a third person perspective. Yeah, like I was sure. pressing the button, holding the radios, talking like, it wasn't even like it was like a dream come true. Like it was totally this out of body focus experience that was like I don't even know how to explain it. Like I really don't. Like words can't describe how emotional and how happy and all this stuff was. And then I crossed the finish line and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. Like this is like just an accomplishment. But it was only a two lap desert race. It doesn't matter. That's all it was, dude. It doesn't matter. <laughs> So, so cool. What did it what did it seem like when you guys were all up there on the hill and stuff, Alfonso? <clears throat> so honestly, the whole time I was super nervous because like, what happened to you last time, but at the same time, like we knew how much it meant to get back to that race. And like you said, the first lap with all the dust, no one would have blamed you if you just would have dropped out then and there. But the never give up attitude you have, man, you just kept pushing and pushing and finished that race and on that home stretch, dude, we were all so proud and so stoked. I think that, like, everyone there, I, I don't think anyone there could have, like, put into words how happy and excited we were for you to finish that race, man. Yeah, that's cool, man. I really appreciated it. And then to see everybody come back, like, at the pits and stuff. Oh, and then one other thing, too. I was so excited to see everybody, see all my crew. I forgot to go to the podium. I just went to the truck. <laughs> nice. So I totally blew that good picture uh, on the podium. Alfonso, but. were you were you riding the emotion a little bit, too, when, when you thought? Because when he was explaining it, I didn't know that off-course business. Were, were you kind of – I mean, for me, I would have, like, sunk down into, oh, my gosh, are we going to, like, have a – a bad, some kind of repeat of something bad, like did that, like come into your head for a second. Um, and then when it's all back on, uh, uh, on course, it's all back to the high again and everybody's pumped. And that's kind of what I'm kind of feeling a little bit. A little bit, man. It, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, Oh man, like this can't go wrong on this day. Like everything's right. got to go right. right. Exactly. Even though nothing did. We got a flat tire in the second lap, but right. just seeing, seeing that helicopter come close and then actually seeing George like, that's so okay. Cool. Now he's this close. He's going to finish. That's awesome. It, it was awesome. And I totally spaced. <clears throat> I let the camera die. I had to swap out another battery. I <laughs> got a wobbly shot of him finishing. Totally dropped the ball on that. But yeah, it was just, it, it was emotions everywhere, man. I'll bet. It's, and it's almost like, um, like Craig, like scripted this whole thing. But you how, know do, I mean? you, how well, do you oh, yeah. do that? Though? I mean, obviously not. Like, and there's no, um, there's nothing negative no, in that statement. Those, it's yeah. like one of these guys that like just is a solid dude. That's like, wouldn't it be awesome if I could help have a platform to to get through this? You know, that's the way I see it. Yeah, so it all awesome. started from a little bicycle ride. So cool, it's crazy, right? So cool. <laughs> But it it was kind of like yeah, that. Though, now that you now that you mention it, is like when I was driving around and I got lost. Um, 
like one of the guys did come kind of close to me and I was like, okay, there's yeah, no way in hell I'm going to have any, like I'm going way out here. So like I drove through the rocks and by the big trees and through the bush, like I wasn't anywhere close to the course until I got to a point where I knew that I saw something that I did before to be able to turn around and go back. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Cause I was kind of scared about that too. I bet. I bet. So, it felt like one of those uh, ESPN documentaries. Uh, like yeah, 40, yeah, whatever. totally, totally. The one of the what? The, the, yeah, what are they called? The twenty for twenty or what's that? Go yeah, ahead, go ahead, Alfonso. The, the documentaries where they they're usually like feel good stories, like someone got really hurt and came back and overcome the adversity. Adversity. I mean, dude, it, you couldn't have scripted it any better, right? Like, I mean, especially with everything you went through on race day, getting lost, getting a flat tire. You finished, and uh, I think uh, you beat yourself up a little bit too hard sometimes. You finished, man. You, yeah, you got to hold that that trophy up when you do get it from Rob. You got to hold that thing up high, man. Dude, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. We're bringing that thing in the studio for sure. Oh, one thing <laughs> I forgot to mention too was I think I said it at the beginning of the show, but like for Alfonso, like. Um, I had to pass a couple of guys with a flat tire. Like I had to still pass a couple dudes. And one of the guys was like totally taking up the whole race course and I couldn't get past him because there was no places to pass. So I just dipped out onto the side of the race course and was just mobbing through trees, <laughs> like big trees too. Like I, I lumberjacking. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know if I mentioned on the show or if I told you before, but it felt like I was driving through a cornfield, like, because so many yeah. bushes were, like, waving, flying <laughs> over me. I can picture it. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, please don't hit anything. Like, please don't hit anything. And I was probably doing, like, anywhere between 50 and 60 miles an hour just through fresh desert. Like, and finally, like, I passed a dude, and I just went right back on the track and, like, got back into my line. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thank you. Nice. Thank you. So. <laughs> It it was it was pretty crazy, man. I don't know if you heard me talking on the radio like to that, or if they uh, told you that all that stuff was happening, Alfonso. No, I, I missed that stuff, man. I was up on the hill, just so when you signed up for short course, I thought it meant a short course. I didn't know it was going to be twenty nine laps, man. <laughs> I didn't either. I thought they were going to give us a, a like a little course that we just do a bunch of laps on, like maybe ten miles or something. But nope, it was. Two laps on that big old huge desert course. Yeah, so I was kind of out of position for getting pictures and videos of you. I'll, I'll I know for next time. I think all the guys that did uh, that were out there got a, did a good job, man. We got some good pictures and helicopter stuff. And Chase uh, from Shock Therapy said that he's got some good stuff from inside the helicopter. So, man, I really appreciate all the media stuff that you did. You got some really. Uh, awesome natural moments man so i gotta post some of that stuff so i really really appreciate it dude yeah no worries man anything for uh a good guy like you man i appreciate it you keep living that dirt life son so uh what's uh next for you are you gonna get out to the desert soon yeah so halloween i think we're gonna go out to akatia man oh that'll be pretty Let's fun go for it one last time yeah yeah, that's cool, man. All right, we'll keep in touch and let me know how th how things go. I definitely want to see if we can uh, meet up before you move out to Texas. So it was good talking to you, and I'm glad yeah. that you were able to come and hang out with us for the weekend and get a, a taste of the race life out there in the dirt. Yeah, man, thank you again for the opportunity. You got and, it, uh, dude. Take care, George. Take All right, care, uh, Casey. See you, buddy. Take care. Later, dude. Bye. Jeff says minus the right fender during that crop dusting. That's, that's a pretty good uh, picture. Yeah, crop, crop dusting. <laughs> That's what it felt like, man. Have you ever seen those movies where they're driving a car through the cornfield? Yeah, and all of those... it's just going. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> Except for it was with a, a side by side with no windshield, so it's hitting me right in the face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so at least, at least I got by like super quick, man. Um, man, I this. It was just one race. It's the UTV World Championships. It was 2020. It was still weird. There was so many people that had negative thoughts about certain things about the race and stuff. But when I left that that race, man, I can't tell you how meaningful it was to see everybody. Absolutely. It was so freaking cool. And that's one of the reasons that I thought on the way home. It took us five hours to get home from Havasu to Tucson. I couldn't stop thinking about how much I want the show to keep succeeding but I want it to be a little bit more meaningful. I want it to be a little bit more motivational. I want to get a little bit more life stories, you know. Like, we talked about so many cool things tonight. And we talked a little bit about racing. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Yep. Like, how awesome is it? Because that's exactly what we do in the pits. And it was what inspired you guys to get this platform going in and the it, first place. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just me. Like, it wasn't just my story. Every single person here had a story. Even the kids had the same kind of yeah. motivational stories, right? They're like, I call them little micro stories that fit into the big yeah. um, picture. It's super cool. So, all right. So... I really appreciate everybody, man. We Usually we do a rapid-fire Q&A with... So uh, let me throw this at you. Yeah. We kind of have to. The rapid-fire so Q&A? So let's mix it up because I haven't uh, seen some of these new ones, which I like. Yeah, so I was going to uh, so we'll ask do you. It, we'll do it super quick, but we're going to do it like this. Okay. Ready? We're going to do this, and then we have to say it. Okay. So you're going to say... Let's see. How are we going to announce it? Like, uh, one, two, three, I'll say it, and then we have to... We both say what it is? Sure. Yeah, you start, though. Okay, so I'll do the first one, and then we just immediately answer it. Okay. Okay, ready? Dunes or the river? Dunes. Dunes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Three-wheeler or quad? Three-wheeler. Quad. Cian Cirillo or Osborne? Cian Cirillo. Yeah. I, well, the only reason I'm saying him, though, is because Osborne just won the championship. Like, he's already – we'll talk about this on a, on a future show about the motocross. But so This is a hard one for me because these are both my guys. Well, that's what you I mean. What I mean. That's yeah. the reason why I put him on here. But <laughs> the reason I'm saying Cincerillo is because he's the underdog right now. This is true. So this is true. That's the only reason I picked him. Uh, Favorite food: pizza, tacos. That's pretty easy for me. Little Smokies or pizza rolls? Little Smokies. Little Smokies too. His favorite soda: Dr Pepper. Diet: Dr Pepper. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna go back because this weekend I was actually like. As weird as it sounds, these whole things that keep popping up. Fanta. I felt like an orange soda again. <laughs> and I haven't felt like an orange soda in like 10 months. And that's the thing that I've been craving ever since I got hurt. So that's it's crazy. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Telekinesis. What's that? So if I'm seeing it right, it's like that mind power of knowing what's in your head. Ooh, really? Yeah. So and then and then affecting what's in your head. Can, don't you already have telekinesis with your wife and the girls, though? <laughs> no. Dude, um, I'm just gonna go with flying because I could. I've, if I ever get in a situation where I need to dip out, I could fly this instead is of walk. True. So. Could have flown up to that helicopter. Yeah, exactly. Uggs or Crocs? Oh, uh, neither. Yeah, I don't want either. But I'm picking <laughs> Crocs just because my dad wears them. I'll go Crocs too because my buddy Don Kelly's oh, a nurse. He's got them. He em. rocks them. Yep. Most memorable race. Oh, you, you can you can go because this is a little longer. I yeah, got a good one though. I'm gonna skip it. It, it is. It's gonna go too long. Mine's just Glenn Helen on the 80s. So perfect. I crashed the first turn and almost won at the end of the end of the race. So Love that, it. Perfect. La okay, last race back after brain surgery. That'll, yeah, that'll that's be a good one. that'll be mine with cool. a win. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Praline cream. Gold medal ribbon. What's that? Oh man, Baskin what is Robbins. It? Baskin Robbins. Gold actually, medal ribbon. Actually, I'm I'm tied that and uh, world class chocolate. Is it's, it gold medal ribbon? Is that the flavor? Dude, it's what drop, is it? Drop the mic. It's really? like vanilla chocolate with some kind of caramel swirl. It's dumb. You have to get it. Like a turtle kind of? Yeah, kind of. Ooh, my mom might like that one. Basket Ski, or, ski or snowboard? Snowboard. Snowboard. Sweet. I feel like we're not finished if we don't do this, so I'm glad okay, we're doing it. Dogs do or it. cats? Dogs. Dogs. Uh, Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. Dang. COVID, I, COVID ruined everything. I'm going Netflix. So I'll go YouTube just because I watch it so much, but I've been really getting back into Netflix lately. So see, burrito or taco? Taco, taco. Uh, we we both know this answer: Supercross or motocross? Yeah, Supercross. Yeah, motocross. Uh, what other form of racing you want to try? Because we always say it, I'm literally pumped on monster trucks. Yeah, now you are. <laughs> I told you. Um, just because of this weekend, I'm gonna say I'd like to co-drive in a desert car. I don't, Ooh, sweet. I, don't, I don't even care about the driving thing since I got a little taste of it going in the in the RS1 in a single seater. Yep. I had a girl ask me why I didn't have a co-driver, and it made me think, why didn't I want to try being a co-driver? Seriously, and think of the whole – you have a whole different mindset now of all of the rest yeah, of the that industry. Was the whole, yeah, the, the wrenches and the dudes that are – I mean, go back to when you talked about the guy for um, – um, Shoot, who who was the mechanic that immediately jumped into and said fix this? And this Darren. Thing? Oh, for for Justin. Darren, right? yeah, Darren. How cool was that? He was just like barking him out, like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, direction was so key in that so situation. Awesome. So seeing so awesome. that, like, I would love to be able to understand what it's like in the passenger seat too. Exactly. I bet Joe could give us some major stories about that stuff. Joe Whining, dude, and some major advice too. Absolutely. All right, so we got one left, right? All right. Oh, this one's easy. We don't even have to ask the question. I'm picking chips and guacamole. 
Man, I love fries too, but yeah, chips and guac. Have you ever had uh, super fries? I was just going to say, so that's the best of both worlds. Yes. Yeah, so, anybody doesn't know what super fries are, it's fries with basically nachos on top of them with guacamole, yeah, guacamole. carne asada. Yeah, it's so good. So, all right. Good job, Sweet. Case. Sweet, too. Sweet. <laughs> um, so next week's show is going to be a little bit different because we talked so much racing uh, the past two or three shows. Uh, we got Carrie and Oren on. Uh, Carrie and Oren. Oren is a, uh, the co-driver for Bryce Menzies, and nice. uh, Carrie is the uh, owner at Track Rail Off-Road. So it's going to be neat to talk with both of them because they both have completely different perspectives on... We were just talking about co-drivers. There yeah, you go. exactly. And they both have completely different perspectives on... Uh, well, maybe not d- different perspectives, but they, they have different functions in the dirt. So right. Equally be, as important. Yeah, absolutely. If not more sometimes. Yeah, and, well, and Carrie, uh, she actually does... Uh, the track and trail off-road, a lot of Jeep stuff and overlanding stuff and things cool. like that. So it'll be neat to talk with both of them. Awesome. Um, I want to uh, – I don't know if we have any more comments, Case, if you want to look at those, but I want to thank everybody for uh, chiming in and having a good time with us. Tyrone, you were asking so many questions, man. I don't know if uh, we could have got all, all to all of them. Yeah, and I miss you too, buddy. He made that comment about uh, the industry needing you and wanting you, and he said the same thing about me for RC. And yeah, I, I saw I know, that. So I know the feeling. Thanks, buddy. I miss, miss you guys too. So, the, yeah, there are a few uh, – Jeremiah Drew, let's connect. I love your show. Um, John Hooperts, shoot, where'd he go? That's why it's called the Dirt Life, not Dirt Racing. Hey, yeah, see, perfect. Uh, George, co drive. Do we need to go? Me. Oh, no, my daughter. Nope, okay. Think we got that. Come drive with me at Blue Water, Jeremiah Drew. Cool. Yeah, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to connect with you, Jeremiah. I pre- appreciate that offer, man. Um, I'm gonna definitely uh, be talking with some people about uh, doing some co-driving. So I don't want to make any uh, decisions right yet and say uh, whether I can or can't because I've already actually got a couple offers to do it. Oh, look who just piped in with the American flag. Oh, Robert, dude. You already got me, like, it got heavy in the studio when you came over here, Rob, and yep. uh, now you got me crying knowing that I got the Perseverance Award, so yep. I didn't know, but thank you, man. I'm going to call you after the show, so Rob, watch for your phone, bud. April wants to give you a ride in uh, their golf cart called the Sarge. What's that? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds pretty cool, though. I know. It does sound cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, de- I'll definitely do that. Can we bring tacos, though? Um, so thank you to all of our guests for, uh, you know, chiming in today. It was really, really cool. Um, we definitely want to still do the giveaway. So keyword taco. Yeah, we'll do something with the word keyword taco, right? Uh, so please pay attention on our social media channels. Um, we're going to post something on our social media channel. Why don't we do that case? Like since you just mentioned it, you guys have a little bit of a head start keyword taco and I'll, we'll figure out something to do on social media with that. So anybody that didn't watch the show, they won't be able to understand they don't know what the keyword do. taco. Yeah, they don't know keyword taco. So pay attention to the keyword taco. We'll post some on social media. There's going to be uh, four or five wheels and tires that are coming off the uh, project uh, Winning at Life RS1. These uh, these tires, unfortunately, uh, have seen better days, but these would be super, super cool things to hang on the wall. And uh, since I felt like a superstar with the helicopter following me around, um, I'll just uh, sign them for you guys, and we'll give away some of these TAC meds, uh, safety, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, ribbons, dog tags. And uh, Ryan from KMC said he'll throw in some swag too. So uh, you guys pay attention to our social media channels this week, and you guys can win that stuff again. Don't forget my candle, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll even get two. You can have one in the garage and one in the bedroom, Oh, right? my life will be complete with, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Like I said, thank you very much to our guests. We uh, didn't have time to uh, run our commercials during the uh, middle segment, so I want to thank all of our sponsors from the bottom of our heart. We really, really appreciate all their support. So thank you very much to the guys at Shock Therapy. They were just an amazing group of people. Use the code DIRTLIFE at shocktherapist.com or give them a call and say the Dirt Life sent you. Thank you to Ryan at KMC We for just being a badass all-around guy yep. and supporting you guys in the audience. We really appreciate him. Uh, ZollingerRacingProducts.com. Uh, Travis Zollinger and all his guys did very well at the races this weekend. You can use the same parts they did, and we did on the project Winning at Life RS1 build. You can use the code DIRTLIFE at ZollingerRacingProducts.com and save a whole bunch of money. And thank you very much to Lance and all his crew at Solder Weld for always having our back with uh, the off-road repair kits. You can go buy one at SolderWeld.com with the code DIRTLIFE and save a whole bunch of money, too. So, um, again, I'd say at every show, we thank you guys so much for uh, joining us and being a part of this uh, dirt life that we all live. I know it's a small uh, crew that we have here, but uh, we love it. We love hanging out with you guys. So, 
Thank you very much, Case, for coming in. It was really cool to have you here to be a support mechanism for this emotional uh, show, dude. Absolutely. I'm I'm pumped. Robert, you're, you're just changing lives, bro. I, I know you hear this kind of stuff all the time, but just think of what he said, uh, what he snapped um, Caden out of, you know, after or before that next. So, like, he's got time. You want to hear another he's story? He's giving of himself 24-7. I'll say this super quick, but it's another story. There's a double-leg amputee racing. And he's a vet, a war veteran. He's not his first race, but they're all out there supporting him. He's so racing. Awesome. Yeah. They go out there and get him if he breaks down. Like, it's so amazing. Like, you see the things that happens, like, that he's doing, like, in real life. It's amazing. And and think of Robert and his crew are so focused on that to make sure this guy has the perfect weekend. Yeah. But he still has time to go make it happen for Caden in that moment that matters. Yeah. 100%. And then you know, me. F- throw it up to you. It's just, it's yeah. awesome. Thanks, uh, Robert, for what you do and your guys. And it's just, you've pretty much made my week for me, brother. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We really appreciate Robert. We appreciate everybody. Thank you guys so much. We love all you guys. Thank you for living your dirt life with us. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Dirt Life Show. 